Welcome to D&D, celebration of the Red Box. We're going to run a little game here. My name is Chris Perkins, Hi, Chris. and I am your humble DM, your humble and merciful DM. Uh, although you may have heard that I uh, like to brutalize my players, it's not true. Basically, you guys are second level, and so you've had some experiences together, and maybe you've you know, lost one or two members over, over your uh, short but illustrious adventuring careers. Um, but at this point in time, there's sort of a general assumption that you kind of know each other a little bit. Um, and you've sort of come to trust each other on a number of uh, uh, encounters that have pitted you against uh, kobolds and against a white dragon and various other threats as you've been exploring a place, a dungeon complex known as the Twisting Halls. And all you really know about the Twisting Halls is that this dungeon was built long, long ago by a reclusive sect of minotaurs. And they had all kinds of weird uh, things down here, altars dedicated to primal deities and things like that. And uh, much of your recent adventures have taken place in the Twisting Halls, and actually you've cleared out a great deal of it. And uh, as you are sort of plumbing the dungeon, looking for secret chambers and other places that you may have missed, you stumble upon a pair of elf druids who were like the last people you expected to find deep underground. And uh, one of them introduces himself to you as Falarian. And uh, at first, they seem to be hiding from you. Like they didn't know exactly what to expect when they saw these lights approaching down this passageway. Um, what I'd like you to do is to take your characters and just sort of arrange them over here for the time being. So you guys have been... And it's not important where you guys are at this point in time. We can reconfigure you as needed as we go. And by the way, if you have any questions during the game, just feel free to ask, and I'd be happy to sort of uh, answer them to the best of my ability. So as you guys are uh, making your way down this passage, and you're pretty sure there are no monsters in the area, you've totally cleared this area out, a pair of elves sort of peek at you from behind a curtain. Very sort of comical, almost sort of Scooby-Doo style. Um, with great trepidation, they look, they realize that what they're looking at aren't monsters of any kind, and then they seem to show, sigh with relief. And they say, Hello? Are, are you, what are you doing here? Well, we could ask the same of you. We have been hiding. Hiding? Yes. F from what? From the dangers here. There are no dangers. We've made sure of that, haven't we, folks? He says, you are adventurers? Of sorts, yes. Sorry, what are you doing down here? Well, there were three of us. And we came here because, uh, well, we have this map, see? And on the map there is this indication of a... Look, why are we talking to you through the curtain? Well, why don't you... <laughs> they step through. And uh, this guy says, I'm Thalarian. I'm, uh, well, I'm not the leader of our group. The leader of our group is, uh, well, he turns to his friend and they kind of look at each other. Uh, the, she's missing. Kathera. She was leading this little expedition down here. You see, we believe that this dungeon is actually built in a very strange place and that there is this portal. And he sort of shows you his map. And uh, marked on the map is basically sort of a, a section of the dungeon that looks remarkably like what's laid out here. Uh, but through the curtain, there is this room marked, and on the map, there is this little symbol uh, that looks like a star. And he says, right here, Kithera believes that there is a, or she believed, and she was absolutely right, that there is a portal that leads to another dungeon in this exact same location, but on another plane. Okay. There's some sort of a connection between these two places. It's almost as if it's a twin. Right. But it lies in a place called the Feywild. Have you heard of it? Yes. 
<laughs> really. So Just about. <laughs> after, how did she go through the portal? Or? Well, she found the words to activate it, and she was going to do some reconnaissance. She told us to wait here. Did she tell you the words? Yes. Can I just, how did you get here? Because this place was crawling with beasties until yes. we bravely slew them all. Cathera had a ritual scroll that allowed us to turn into animals. And, and in this form. scampered. Exactly. Uh, however, the effects of that scroll have expired and unfortunately Cathera hasn't returned. And, um, well, not to put too fine a point on it, we follow her orders to the letter, mm. but we are concerned. Okay. So and honestly, adventuring really isn't our cup of tea. Um, we're sort of out of our element here. This place is dreary and enclosed and rather frightful. What kind of things are uh, reputed to be in this uh, mirror dungeon? Well, that we're not exactly sure. and. Uh, that was really what brought her here. She wanted to see what lied on the other side. Um, the place where this, the realm where this parallel dungeon resides is a realm of great magical wonder. Um, magic there is accentuated and uh, from what I've heard, the nature of creatures that live there are far more wild. That would explain the elf interest thing. Let's go. <laughs> he on, says, uh, do you always jingle when you walk? Maybe. Yes. <laughs> yes <we do. laughs> it's all your treasure. Um, you've yeah. all got like bunches of coins that you've hoarded off of monsters and plundered from various hidden vaults and things. Is that actually weighing us down? It doesn't matter, it's money. We're keeping it. <laughs> no, it doesn't weigh you down in the least. Oh, okay. <laughs> we're not worrying about that. I can always I carry just, it if you want. You know? I was yeah. just wondering whether if we're going through to another plane that's going to have a completely new map, whether we should probably leave some of the stuff here if we've got that much stuff. It's all right, we'll look after it for you. <laughs> okay, obviously not. Well, let, let's, says, let's well, have since, a look at this magic portal of yours. Absolutely. Then, he'll, he'll take you into this room. I know about these things. Where take there's this beautiful inscription on the floor uh, and a, a pulsating circle of light that just seems to have formed inches above the floor. Mm -hmm. uh, and he says, this has been activated uh, by Cathera. We don't know exactly how long the portal will persist. I mean, it's a fixture here, but you have to say the words to activate it. But it is currently active. If you were to step can in it now... Can I have a little kind of shifty at it? Yeah, absolutely. It? You could make uh, what's called an arcana skill check. Uh, your skills are listed on the top so left plus, hand. Uh, there it is. It's a 15. Well done. Um, you have no doubt that it is exactly what Cathera believed it was. It is a permanent teleportation circle that can be activated by magic here, and it is currently live for at least another uh, two or three hours. One way or two way? Uh, it is two way. Definitely two way. But a good question to ask. <laughs> <laughs> the last thing they don't so she to went me. through. She went through, and uh, they tell you, Valerian tells you that they had express orders to remain here, and far be it for them to disobey. Uh, there's something. Well, you don't have to make any sort of insight check to know that these these druids seem. Uh, to have a very strict hierarchy. And the word lackey comes to mind. Perhaps, although you don't think Valerian would necessarily refer yeah. to himself as. <laughs> so crazy. is this place through the portal more dangerous or less dangerous than where we are now? You suspect it's going to be more dangerous Ooh. by virtue of the fact that you've pretty much cleared this place out. Um, and beyond this portal lies another dungeon of unknown occupants. Beyond this portal lies another dungeon of unknown occupants. And they don't seem to be uh, lying or anything like that? Uh, if you want to check to see if they've got some sort of a uh, hidden agenda, you have uh, a skill called Insight. Insight. It should be one of the ones listed in the top left uh, part of your page under the wisdom. Yeah, I got it. Plus two. All right. Oh, you got it good. Ooh, well done. You got plus ten so on yours. You rolled a twenty. Uh, does anybody else want to attempt an insight check? You roll a d20 and you add the bonus um, that's indicated. Yeah. Your insight is plus one. Nine. Nine. 
Mine's plus 10. Oh, Ooh, excellent. I think we should rely on you to. Uh, would you care to make a d20 roll and add sure. 10 to that? We'll see how you did. 19. So it looks like our high roll is actually Terry the Dwarf. Uh, but actually, you rolled high enough as well to know that these elves are nothing but sincere. Uh, they tell you that the dungeon that lies on the other side was built by the same builders who built this one as a retreat in case this place was conquered. Um, they didn't necessarily know they were building it in the Feywild, but they were aware enough to know that it was on another plane and would make a, a safe sanctuary. Should we have a huddle? Away from these chaps? Or should we just do this? Well, I'm not diving right in. I'm not going first. Would you like us to see if we can re retrieve Kathira for you? We'll find out what's happened to her. Given that her orders were to have us wait here and guard this end of the portal, um, that would be a great favor to us. I'm sure she's all right. She's more than capable of taking care of herself, but still, we are concerned that she has been gone for several hours now. Is there anything you can give us that might help us on the other side? It would seem that this is well meant to He says, Kathera had something with her, something that she took great pains to acquire, some sort of key uh, to the doors on the other side. She said she would need it. Uh, however, she only had the one. Who? And why did she want to come here in the first place? Kathera is, well, in our circle, she's something of an anomaly. Her curiosity is insatiable. Uh, she has been fascinated by the ancient cultures that built things around here, and she has pursued this doggedly. As soon as she came into possession of the key, she, well, she gathered us up and took us here. And the circle, I'm sure, will be quite upset, unless, of course, she finds something that they consider valuable. Then perhaps they will forget. She is a, a mercurial creature. Okay, so she's kind of possibly not going to look like human if we meet her. She might be uh, anything possibly. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Yes, she is skilled at assuming many different uh, animal and bestial forms. Sure. Might be going on a rat catching. To no squishing little animals. <laughs> Good point. Well, it looks like we're not going to get our usual reward up front for going after someone because um, it looks like she's probably in some much trouble. Wow. I like, we I should like do to, this for the, you know. I like to think of the uh, patient plan on this. And then, you know, I'm loaded down with gold here. Why should I just turn around and, and, and just head back to the tavern? And absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. He says, well, it is quite possible that the Minotaurs who built this place, and the Minotaurs, of course, uh, being creatures who guard their treasure well, doubtless they would have hidden it. The good treasure on the other side. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Treasure works. I mean, I, I'm not certain one way or the other. I could be wrong. No, it sounds good. If the second dungeon was built to defend... And we know, the sh and if it's a mirror, we know the shape of it, so, hey. He yeah. says, at the very least, we can, can give you the map. I can draw a quick map. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have yes. the map. Can one of you guys learn the words? So oh, can you take... Can, can, uh, the words that react, activate the portal. Yeah, you, those are easy. Teachers? Yeah, in fact, they're inscribed on the map that he gives you, which basically lays out this complex. So you have uh, the look of the entire location. Can I make a copy of that? Absolutely. Of the wordage. Yeah. Did you want to do it surreptitiously, like? Um, is it? I mean, I'll memorize them if I can. Oh, okay. Absolutely. Just so that. In case the map bursts into flames on the other side. Yeah. <laughs> or, you eat it or something. Yeah. He says, I don't know what sort of experiences you'll have over there on the other side. Of course, we've never been there. We've been in the, the mirror of it, though. So mm -hmm. is there anything we know from our experiences here that might, um, that might influence what we find on the other side? Um, most, of the, most of the rooms that you experienced were by and large empty, except for some monstrous inhabitants. There was a dragon that you fought uh, and, and slain. It was a small Where was one. That? Uh, it was over here. Here? Yeah, exactly. Okay. And uh, that dragon had a bunch of kobold minions who had basically it had used to kind of scour the dungeon and bring all the treasure to it. So almost everything of value was basically in the dragon's lair. Uh, there was a uh, 
a, a wizard who had basically gotten into a partnership with the dragon and was operating out of a lab over <laughs> here. Uh, you dealt with him in typical adventurer fashion. Absolutely. and uh, We sat down and talked to him. He had some gnarly undead minions serving him, and you crushed them. Right, let's do it. Who's going first? Um, sorry, just before we go in, um, this dark leaf leather armor. Yes. Am I aware, is it, have I just acquired it, or have I had it all the You've time? You've had, you acquired it, and it is now yours. Excellent. You, you have shed down. your old armor, and this is much finer. Brilliant. Yep. And, uh... Just checking my amulet is equipped. Yep, your amulet is equipped. Cool. That's something else that you found on your explorations. We like shiny things. Okay. Okay. Uh, who wants to do one, a one at a time job? Ah, uh, no. You can move can up. Up to four people can go four at once. Four people. Uh, okay. We're right behind you. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe it might be useful to have the cleric go in with the no, first thanks. <laughs> okay, I've got the words in my head. All right. Yeah. So we've got the wizard and possibly the cleric. Check uh, my hair I'll, first. I'll pull in you to go. I'm the fighter. All right. Yeah, I'm putting me in as well. I think. All right. So the one remaining don't behind is the away. rogue. That's fine. I'm going to wait for them to go through. Maybe wait two minutes. Make sure I don't hear any blood curling screams, <laughs> and then go. Can we oh. attach a rope to her so that we can pull her through? <laughs> Will the rogue be able to go through without the wizard? Oh, I have a rope. We could attach oh. the rope. Uh, the cleric. The cleric. You should use the words as well. Okay. I won't remember them, but I can use them. All right. Uh, I'll leave the map with you. You step in the portal, you invoke the words. Uh, the, the, some motes of light begin to sort of swirl up from the ring and begin to engulf you one at a time. And you just gradually sort of fade away, leaving the rogue behind. Uh, rogue, once they're gone, Valerian turns to you and says, Ha! Ah, now we've got you! And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Hardly. Uh, he says, you're all very brave. They are. I'm not. But they are. He if says, there's a chance that, you know, she'll, we can bring her back, we'll bring her back. If there's no chance, then sorry. Uh, he sort of uh, kneels down to your level and you see he's got big antlers mounted to his helm. <laughs> I will try not to stare at the <laughs> <laughs> It'll be quite hard, but yeah. I'll try. Yeah. And uh, he says, well, I wish you the best of luck and... Um, I wish I could give you more information about Kathera. She is... Uh, she is quite beyond us sometimes, and uh, it may take some persuading to get her to return with you. But please, do what you can. Is there any form she's more likely to take? She's rather fond of kind of monstrous forms. Okay. She doesn't do anything traditional. The rest of us are quite hell happy being wolves and elks and rats. She's... Oh, well, she is what she is. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, I would urge you to be cautious in not uh, battling her accidentally. Uh, she can speak in whatever form she's assumed, so... Okay. I might rush on and tell the others that, just... <laughs> <laughs> All right, you step on. Before the rogue appears, you guys appear in the circle. Uh, you see that the... Complexion of the, the, the shape of the room is the same, but its complexion is different. Rather than being just plain mortared stone, you see somebody is taking great pains to carve all sorts of reliefs into the walls. And what the reliefs look like are uh, vines. But if you look really hard, there are creatures hidden behind the stone vines, carved and painted into the stone. And they look uh, like bull-headed men who are... It's, it's painted and carved, almost look like they're hiding behind a veil of thickets. Okay. Um, is, is it just a painting? It appears to be, yes. It appears to okay. be a painted fresco. There are two wooden doors uh, leading out that, of the room. And you can is that see... that a curtain? That is a curtain. And the curtain appears to be very much intact. The doors are heavy wood and you can see set into them is an indentation, uh, vaguely circular. Uh, it looks like some sort of uh, special magical key or activator mm. is needed to open those doors. Okay, so I you we, we, we check the doors check in there, in. they don't move. Uh, as soon as you do, yes, they appear to be locked at the moment. Mm -hmm. Can I have a squeeze at them? Are they sort of thing I could open? Is he Wielder of the magic. You, well, uh, make another arcana check for me. 16. 
you believe that there is magical ways to bypass these doors. While fundamentally they do require some sort of talisman to open, you believe that either an arcana check or a thievery check mm. would be sufficient to trick the doors mm. into, into opening. Uh, so you could get past the whole key thing altogether. And as you come to that revelation, you begin, all of you, to hear a noise through the curtain that sounds like his, hysterical laughter, but almost hyena-like, very animal, not human in any way. Oh, brave. Have a look. And then you sort of hear what sounds like smashing of stone, like something being dropped on the floor and just breaking apart. Close to the curtain or distant? Distant. Distant. Okay. Um, Where's the thief? Well, yeah, the thief will be here shortly. I will try man. and um, be as discreet mm -hmm. as possible when peek through the curtains. All right. Uh, in your effort to be discreet, I'm going to have you make a stealth check, and that's under dexterity. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Uh, roll a 20. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, you, uh, when you peer through the curtain, you can see that there's light emanating from an alcove over here and down the hall from somewhere over there and you see shadows on the wall here from what look to be two creatures in this area and they look like they're just breaking things um, but you're only seeing their shadows you're not seeing them okay. uh, you from your vantage point you can also see there's another curtain here uh, but all of the noise and ruckus seems to be happening from down the hall. What's in the, what was in these rooms? Uh, in the other dungeon complex, those were empty rooms with uh, weird sculpted tiles on the floor and holy basins set into the walls. Okay, okay so the map does... The maps are literally these the same. These will be curtains as yeah, well, then. that's correct. Okay. Well, I guess we better... Is there a thief back with us yet? Ask and you shall receive. <laughs> Excellent. She appears. Don't kill any monsters. Are you all right? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, right, it's okay. A, try not to make too much noise. There's some craziness going on down this corridor. Yeah. Um, and uh, so has the wizard revealed his uh, belief that these I, doors I, are I bypassable? Can, well, I know that. I know. You, you know I can get through these doors. You just. Yeah. Thievery check. It shows like. Oh, don't worry about thieves. Okay. Is there a locked door? Well, th shouldn't we um, <clears throat> um, just worry about these? Yes, but there's a locked door. <laughs> but the locked something door interesting will... behind a locked door. Yes, the the thing... halfling thief has a compulsion <laughs> to go know. to if every locked open, door. I wouldn't go through, but it's a locked door. Therefore, there must be something exciting. Well, maybe. The only thing is these guys down there sound Might come and bash you on the head. Something we might, we because it's not going to stop these guys if they come this way, so... We either go and deal with them first and then come back Are and they investigate yeah. the lock. It's unlikely to be because there, because there's two of them, so... One of them might... Keep thinking. Yeah. I don't know. Unless she's met a friend. Um... I don't think she's she 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 hanging around with her, but it's too soon. You'll find her on her own, I think. Well, look, we can, have, we can sneak down, because you guys... I mean, um, some of us can go through there, because those are just curtains, and some of them, I mean, yeah, pins are movement. Yeah, but if they're smashing things, just so they'll be happy smashing things, just a little bit longer, just so I can try this door. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll come back to the door. <sighs> Fine. Okay. Monsters, monsters coming at us from both directions. That's Bad. the wrong kind of pins are movement. Oh, okay. Mm. But it won't take us long. We'll be back soon. Okay. How would you like to proceed? Just a thought. But um, I've got, I think I've got, I've got a 50 foot rope. Is it worth one of us going down the corridor, two more people going here and here, stretching the rope across and seeing if we can... Lure them. Yeah, see if we can, they sound, if they're smashing things and um, they're in that kind of mood, they might also be in the mood to, to run very fast. Well, how about, <laughs> how about if one of us goes over there, if the two fighters go there and there, and then, and we use your rope, and then, well, I could use a fantastic, I could create an illusion of somebody over here, and sort of get them to run around the corner, and then... If they'd run around the corner... Yeah. Or we could just, if you don't want to waste that spell... No, it's just a hide. I can do it as many times as I want. Oh, okay. See, look. Yeah. Really Hair, better. <laughs> <laughs> Is it really shadowy, kind of? 
Yes. Because and then we jump could in. probably, us being a, a slightly smaller size, could hide in the shadows probably a little bit more effectively than the elf oh, friend here. Dwarf and two half And dwarf. Mm -hmm. Or dwarf and two half Well, yeah. whoever does, I'm happy to do it. But do you want, do you want to go for this idea? Yeah. There, there are advantages. The halflings, the, certainly the halflings do have a stealth advantage. The, the fighters have a strength advantage. So if you're using the rope and you're trying to trip them as they go by, the chances are you'd have more luck if you were strong. Two halflings are one to fight one the other. I'll stand, back. I'll stand over here. I'll hide behind the curtain. <laughs> okay. Sounds like a crazy plan. All right. Let's do it. Good to go. So those who are advancing, the two halflings and the uh, dwarf, I'd like you to make stealth checks. And that's under your you dexterity. Okay. Plus two. Yep. Hmm. Not bad. Is it the check or the modifier? So it's the it's the number on the far right. Sixteen. Okay. Fourteen. Okay. Uh, you guys get some circumstance bonuses because they're making a lot of noise down at the end of the hall. So you're able to get there no problem. The dwarf, I'd like you to also make a perception check. That's under wisdom. Mm -hmm. Plus two. Eight. Okay. No one's um, gonna get jumped. <laughs> you do not need to make a check to see that one of the guys who's causing the disturbance looks just like this. He is a six and a half foot tall, almost seven foot tall, mm -hmm. hyena headed creature uh, with a big hand axe and a shield over his back. And he's got his back to you right now. And you see that they are basically, looks like they've overturned some sort of altar. Like they've dumped this stone lid and smashed it on the floor. And looks like he's rooting around inside of the hollow interior of the altar. Um, and is not paying any attention to you whatsoever. Paying any respect. Uh, the dwarf, um, well, with your role, you noticed, or you hear, something that sounds like lapping, like somebody drinking water mm -hmm. through the curtain. Mm. Okay, behind me. Don't worry about it. It'll be fine. <laughs> By the way, the magic uses is still behind you, the curtain. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're just kind of exactly. I wonder whether this is a bad idea. If, there, if there's something else behind us, too late now. Out of <laughs> we're committed. <laughs> well, we haven't attracted their attention yet, have we? So shall we? Uh, I don't know. I'm still there. It's nothing to do. Yeah, well, I'm when you're in position, distance, I can just go for it. <laughs> I'm sure we could come up with some sort of hand movements or something, like you know. Yeah, when back, you're ready, just give me the thumbs up, and I'll do the do, and you well, know. Hopefully, if, if if one or both of them are... Sorry, is there only one there now? Uh, no, actually, you believe there's a second one, but nobody can actually see it. Oh, okay. okay. Shadows indicate... The, but the shadows indicate two that there's one. two. There's two, in, there's two there, and there's another one lapping at the altar water there. Maybe. So his back is to us. Possibly. So, so could the thief go in and take care of... I've, I've got to go into a corridor with two hyenas. No, no, no. There's one in there, and it's back is two. And I'm just wondering if well, there's something in there. We don't know what it is. Could be anything. Could be you, a you, you want to take a chance and try to peer through the curtain? Yeah. But if you okay. Go. All right. Uh, when you do, yes, you see that there is another one with a big bow over his back, and he's got his head down in the font, and is just drinking. <laughs> Out of it. And, do that well. <laughs> <laughs> and there's water sort of tumbling into the font um, as well. But uh, yeah, he seems to be completely Can consumed. You indicate that to us in some fashion. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I look to them and, and say, Give them the signal. And I go like that. <laughs> <laughs> three? You want <laughs> There's a third one in there. But, but, um, you want three coffees? I still wonder whether it's. I still wonder. These two are, are enjoying themselves, making a lot of noise. This one is drinking. I just, I just think this one, if we took care of him now... But you won't, you won't be able to get him silently. I won't, but... but I might be able to. Might be able to. We still have to do it. Well, it's, I, I, I can't. If you want to change your plan. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, it depends. Can, 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 can the thief do... Can the thief make a, an instant kill if, if, if she's not... Oh, okay. uh, not, uh, there are creatures in the game which are called minions, which only have one hit point. They essentially take one hit and they drop. 
the good news is this guy is a minion. Um, so she could take him out with one hit. Um, You'd have to do it. It would all have to be simultaneous, though, wouldn't it? Well, if I crept very, very quietly, if you two kept on the rope trick, just in case these guys tumbling out, and then I crept past you, and then still try, hopefully, being very quiet, just snuck up on him, and then maybe... And then I'll, we'll, as soon as you kill him, I'll make that signal and then we'll go to get him. to the uh, rest of them going. Mm-hmm. Okay? So we affect that. Okay. Make a stealth check, halfling rogue. Oops, cock die. Uh, stealth. Nineteen. All right, you are very, very quiet. Uh, you can even move through the curtain if you wanted to. What you see on the other side is there is this bronze font set into an alcove across the way. The creature is got his face in the font, so he's not looking at you. Uh, You see that there are four center tiles that have actually been sculpted, and they have runes engraved upon them. Um, But otherwise, they look like the rest of the floor. And the walls, very much like all of the walls you've seen, are carved to look like vines, but there's nobody else in the room. This is just a curtain, so you can obviously hear those guys just as easily through that curtain. Um, And do you want to sneak up behind them? Is that the plan? Uh, yes. Okay. Avoiding the runes or...? Avoiding the runes. Okay. Um, so you want to come around this way? Yeah. Okay. Uh, in that case, make an attack. Um, is this going to then inst- instigate yeah. anything else? If this is successful, I will so signal for you that, to you do, do these signal. spells. Yeah. So this is, this is basically the surprise action you get to do. So you get to make an attack before anybody else gets to do anything. Um, so... Uh, I would suggest that you could probably, because it's a minion, take him out with a basic attack, um, which is sort of in the middle of your character sheet. That's it there. Uh, you do have an ability as a rogue called backstab. Yeah, I was making it up. Yeah. Because um, I am behind him. If... Yeah. You also have something that's not on a card. It's, it's called sneak attack. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but it's a situational thing. In order to have sneak attack... Yeah. To be able to get your extra damage, you have to have what's called combat advantage. And there are several ways to gain combat advantage. You can be flanking with an ally to gain combat advantage. You can also, you also have combat advantage if your enemy is not aware of you, mm-hmm. which is true in this case. But that doesn't, you don't have to worry too much about that right now because that's extra damage. And because this guy's a minion, damage is sort of irrelevant. Okay. All you really have to worry about is hitting him. So for a sneak attack... Yeah. It would just be a basic attack, and then if the circumstances are right, I can You get the extra 2d6 for damage. But yeah. it's still yeah. just a normal attack so yeah. far. Okay. Okay. Hopefully. All right, let's see what happens. What's it? 9, 8, 17. 17 is enough. Yay. You stick this guy in the back, he goes, Arr! and uh, falls over dead. Now I have to make a roll. Okay. You immediately get the sense that these guys think something might be wrong. So at this point oh. in time, I'd like everybody to roll initiative. Your initiative is at the top of your sheet in the middle. Uh, you roll a d20 and add the bonus yeah, to that. Two. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's plus two. So we got an 11 for Terry. Mm, not so good. How did Anvar do? Ooh, five. I got a three here. Okay. Plus and one. Uh, Four? Oh, sorry, I thought you were uh, Leaf, 18. Well done. Uh, Tac Tac, 17. 17. And Hill, 11. 11. All right. Well, Leaf got the highest roll. Um, there are two ways we can do this. I think it might actually be easier if we start with the highest initiative and just go clockwise. Does that sound sure. reasonable? Sure. All right. That will sort of speed things <clears throat> up. So, Leaf, you're technically the first to act. Um, obviously, so as soon as I get the signal, okay. I create an image of a unarmored ooh, ooh elf okay. with immaculate um, dressing and so on. <laughs> and you have great. him appear somewhere down at the end of the sort hall. Of appears about there. Can you make him screech or something? Yeah, it's going to appear and says, and the elf appears and says in a high pitched squeaky voice, Hey, ugly! And then just jumps behind <laughs> the wall. <laughs> Splendid. All right. Uh, it is perfect. 
It appears and then deeks behind a wall. And uh, that's a standard action for you. Yep. You technically have a move action and a minor, but I don't know what you'd want to do with it um, at this point. I don't think there's much I can do. I think you um, probably want to stay behind the curtain. Uh, then, tuck tuck. Um, I could either leg it behind the curtain, or I could... Is it possible, without crossing the rooms, to sort of hide behind the body of the... Just in case they do pop into the curtain. I suppose I have to climb over it slightly. Uh, that's not a problem. Is, is it big enough to hide me if I sort of... You are pretty small, um, and it's a good size. Probably make it to those, you, you totally could if you wanted to. Um, you could even sort of kind of pull it up Help a little bit. It. Roll yourself under it. Could, could, could you move back into the drinking position without look realistic? <laughs> so they chalk it up with its face in the font. Yeah. <laughs> could you lift it? You know, you, you can you can absolutely try to pull that off if you want. To. <laughs> Make it look like he died drinking a. I, I think the panic is set. I'm going to hide behind the dead corpse. Okay. Uh, in that case, make another stealth check for me. Uh, Twenty-seven, I think. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> you bury yourself underneath <laughs> that corpse. Uh, Splendid. Um, you could also do, do something like take a readied action, like if one of them came up close to you, that you could like stab from hiding or something like that. That's it. Um, I suppose just get mm -hmm. my dagger out and just prepare. Okay. That seems prudent. Hill. Mm. Um, well, I'm Assuming I've actually got the rope in my hand. Yes. Uh, you, you guys have probably had a readied action as soon as that happened, that you would just sort of tighten the rope when the time came. Yeah. Um, um, can they just wait until absolutely. the beasties come yeah. around the corner? And then... There's pretty much nothing else okay. I need to do at this stage. Great. Yeah. And uh, that's... What happens is this guy comes around the corner... Uh, sees a curtain ruffle yeah, at I'm the peeking, end we're peeking through. and comes barreling down. Okay, as he runs past, I'd like you guys to make athletics checks for me <laughs> to, to tense up the rope and keep it there with enough force that he's going to fall over it. So that's under your strength. Right. We did send two short Ooh, people. Plus yeah, you're good. Plus nine, 23. And 19. All right, you guys, you guys do it. You pull it tight. He falls prone on his face right there, and his action is over. Now, you guys... Uh, what about the other one? The <laughs> other one parts the curtain, sees his buddy lying dead on the ground, and tries to come to some conclusions. Okay. He comes over and looks at the body. You're hiding underneath with your dagger. <laughs> he's not seeing you at all. He's, he's kind of checking out his friend. There's like a pool of blood forming on the floor, and he doesn't get it. He's just... It's a sharp edge on the bowl. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he, he pokes the corpse with his axe. Still doesn't see you. So he doesn't have any CPR. Or <laughs> <laughs> doesn't have any CPR skills. Uh, let's see, that's a move action for him, a minor action to check the corpse. As his the final of... action, he turns around and begins to walk away. Do you want to let him go, or did you want to try to, you know, stab at him before he leaves? I'm very tempted to stab at him as he leaves. Um, okay. while his that will obviously leaves. reveal your presence to him. But... but I'm hoping that I can get in and kill him before he realizes it. Well, you know being a seasoned adventurer, this guy is not a minion. He's not gonna, he's got hit points and you're gonna have to work him down. Then I might just... Wait for backup. I'm gonna wait and see what happens. Okay, call for backup. Sorry guys, good luck. All right, uh, he leaves the room and... Uh, oh shit. No. Takes off in another direction entirely. Okay. Well, I, if I still have an action left, then I just, I take my axe to... to yep. I climb up on his back and try to... <laughs> the good news is that because he is prone, you have combat advantage against him, which means you get a plus two on your attack roll. So instead of just rolling the whatever it is, the plus mm -hmm. eight, I guess it is. Plus eight, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yours is plus, plus ten. Plus ten. Yep, 21. Okay, you are going to hit him. 
Okay. Would you like to use your power strike on him, which is your encounter power? That gives you an extra die damage. Uh, or do you want to save it? Is there a chance that I'll need it again soon? Everyone seems to have gone, or, or um, he could be going for backup. Uh, okay, no, I'll, 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 I'll do it without. Okay. Uh, okay. So it will be d12, yeah. Yeah. And you add seven. Is that right? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, which stance did you want to be in? Did you want to be in your attack bonus stance or your damage bonus stance? I'll go for damage bonus. Okay. We'll assume as much because you, you had this all laid out in ambush. So you get another plus two on top of that. So that's 14. Okay. Total. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. All right. He takes 14 points of damage and is still alive despite having your axe embedded in his back. Is he bloodied? He is not. <laughs> <laughs> Which means he's still got more than half his hit points. Uh, Cleric, you've seen your plans come to fruition. What would you like to do at this point? I guess I should lend a hand, given the heritage of Ambar, who was a sort of All right. raging barbarian. It's still within him, <laughs> within him to want to do these uh, terrible do things. Shall I advance you? So I'd like to apply okay. my mace to his head. Uh, what's your speed? It's at the top of the sheet in the middle, it's right? It's five. Five, so one, two, three, four, five. Uh, Let's see, he technically fell down in this square here. So you can't reach him there. You could run up to him, though. If you run, you get an extra. Although, if, oh, actually, if he tripped over the rope, he would have, he would have gone slid forward a little bit. Maybe. That's true. <laughs> let's, assume, let's assume that. So you get up there, and you can smash him over the head with your mace. Yeah. So here we go. All right. 17, 17 plus. Uh, what's that? Plus, Plus seven? seven. That's a hit. And your damage should be uh, D, what is it, D8? Plus D8 plus four. Okay. D8 gone. I don't know, it's a 10. Yeah. It's D8. Oh, right. There we go. Let's we'll see. Oh, well done. Sweet. Okay. That bloodies him fairly badly. Uh, he is still alive, but obviously after taking a pounding on his cranium, he seems a little sluggish. Wizard? His bodily hygiene protocol is, is poor and his hair sucks, so I shall, um, from carrying behind the curtain, I think I will zap him with my magic missile. Okay. Using my wand. Yes, you point your big staff at my big him, stick at him, magic missile. I think my magic out. missile is, is I'm, getting, I'm inspired by all the ferns and the greenery, so it's Absolutely. green missile today. Good news about the magic missile is it's an auto-hit spot. Oh, okay. It just zooms in and pops him for six force damage. Cool. Wait, okay. Yes, that's actually good because ranged attacks against prone creatures. How many of them do I get? Uh, uh, for, for this game, you get one. Right. So a magic missile shoots out, blasts him in the head, his brain explodes, and he is dead. Shame. Well, yeah. Well, well, from the other guy running off. Okay. Nice job. Jason. Tac Tac. Um, he's probably too big to take down myself. Is it possible to take half a movement, say something, and then sort of change the movement so I carry on with the mm -hmm. movement? Absolutely. Uh, talking is actually called a free action. It doesn't cost you anything to do so. Um, in that case, I'd like to. Oh, I've got six. So I'm currently. I've got to about. Oh, dear, dear. If I yelled, he'd be able to hear me. Yes. Okay, I'm going to yell over here, you idiot, or something, while making my way to the rest of the group. Okay. Avoiding the runes on the floor. <laughs> one, two, three. <laughs> okay. Uh, you can actually move, I think, one more square beyond that if you wanted. Um, no, I'm all right. Okay. Does he take any notice? Uh, he almost certainly heard you, but you're, n you don't, you're not in a vantage point now where you can ascertain what he's going to do. Uh, that is only a move action for you, so you could theoretically ready an attack if he got close enough to you. I uh, will ready an attack and probably tell the others to do the rope trick again if it works. I presume <laughs> it did, because there's a dead corpse again. Yes, you're looking at a dead, bleeding corpse. It clearly yeah. worked perfectly. Oh, can we push the corpse to one side so he's not in the line of sight? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, let's Aren't see. they just going to come through the other one anyway? Uh, moving the corpse would take a standard action. You had already spent yours to okay. attack, so currently he's still lying on the floor. I guess the rogue, if you didn't want to hold your ready to attack, you could use your, your standard action instead to kind of pull the dead guy like over into this room or something. The dead guy <laughs> repository. <laughs> and clean the floor with <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, the multiply! Um, an, uh, I'll just you start to mop up the blood. Kick it to over there to the pass where the other halfling is. Uh, like tumble and pull okay. into the alcove. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so you probably have. Well, if you, if you do that, you're going to be out in the hall. I mean, well, it's, it's me next. That's probably all. It's going to be a while before they come around the corner. He's gone off to. I can finish the cleanup. All right, fine. I'll just shove it towards you and okay. deal with it. All right. She gives it a kick, and yeah, I'll you pull it over. Drag it in to the alcove and then get ready on the rope again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Works so well the first time. Absolutely. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Nothing. The fighter in the pie, I'm on the end of the rope the entire game. Awesome. That's probably actually the first time that a... A player's plan has ever worked. In that <laughs> <team>. <laughs> it's quite novel, isn't it? Uh, so you guys get set up. Uh, you hear. Oh, can I ready my freezing burst? Sure can. Range 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10 to yes. here because that's a. Mm-hmm. So that as soon as I see. Trouble. Trouble coming around the corner, I yep. can. Okay. Go. <laughs> You guys hear a set of wooden doors open, and then you hear a barking noise. Uh, and then a few moments later, you hear the sounds of armor coming down the hallway. And this figure reappears. As soon as he appears there. Yeah. There's a, <laughs> so it sounds like it does sound like it. <laughs> it's the jelly. That's a freeze. <laughs> Yeah, it's a freezy pop burst. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sort of ice cream pop. Uh, so, go ahead, freezing burst guy. <laughs> so what is this? Attack plus five versus reflexes. Okay. Take this, ugly. Oops. Two. <laughs> plus five is 12. That does not... No, do... that's a two. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Even worse. Uh, that misses him, but fortunately he's not alone. There's another creature you can't see in this square here. You can make another attack against him. Oh. Sweet. Oh, ten. <laughs> no. Okay. Maybe I'll wait. Right. <laughs> Maybe I'll try something a bit more effective next time. All right. Okay, but we're still hidden with this rope. You so are. Just and I'm place. just standing there. <laughs> so this is good. Then they're going towards ice pop, though. Exactly. <laughs> Crazy pop man. So <laughs> this guy sees a big pool of <laughs> blood on the floor. But I'm, I'm standing, I'm trying to track attention. I'm, yes. ah, ooh, look at me, look at me. I'm going to give him <laughs> a perception a, check yeah. to try to see the rope. I'm wiping the blood off my mace. <laughs> <laughs> well, he definitely sees the cleric standing in the middle of the hall, too. Yeah, yeah. The question is, can he see, the, is he paying more attention to the cleric than the rope? It turns out he is. So he comes barreling <laughs> down the hall. Nice. Yay. Uh, I need you guys to make another athletics check it to try to trip him up. Do the rope trick. Let's do this a lot. Three. So plus ten is thirteen. Uh, I'm on twenty. Okay. Uh, you've got a good intense. Dwarf wasn't quite ready. <laughs> and the rope gets sort of snagged out of his hands. Uh, basically, you don't trip him, but you do stop him at that point. <laughs> he becomes basically tangled up in the rope, um, but he does not fall. Uh, so when he gets that far, Realizing that he can't reach the cleric, he turns around and tries to bash you with his axe. Yay. Uh, he only rolls uh, a, let's see, plus seven, 13 on your AC. No, no, All right. No. This axe slams into the stonework above your head. This guy moves out to here, draws his great bow, oh. and uh, takes a beat on the cleric. Who's How can he see? I mean... He's yeah, got I, I'm cover. hidden behind, I'm covered. Yeah, he's got cover. And I'm also saying to that guy, Dad, Dad, it's been such a long yeah. time. Um. <laughs> You've changed. <laughs> You've changed. <laughs> Is he a minion, the guy with the bow? This guy's a minion. Okay. Uh, Where, where's our thief again? I hit my chicken. Sorry, sounds good to yeah. me. <laughs> right next to you. No more. Okay, so he's going to try to take a shot at the cleric. He takes a minus two penalty because the cleric has cover. 
Uh, he rolls a 12, 10, plus 7, 17 versus armor class. What is your armor class? Yeah, that's a good question. And uh, it gets 18. Just misses you. By virtue of the cover, yeah. you get out of the way. Uh, and his action is spent. And it is the dwarf's turn. A little bit of tactical news. If you were to shift into this position, you would be what's called flanking this mm -hmm. guy. And because you're <coughs> flanking him, you have combat advantage and you get a plus two bonus to hit. Right. If that's what you want to do. Okay, well, um, if or I go for... Or you could, like, you know, try to circle around or do some other funny stuff. No, I'll, 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 I'll stay in this position okay. and, and go from... But I think the... I don't know, unless you'd prefer... Anyone, anyone would think it would be more useful for me to get rid of the... I don't think he's too much of a danger. Don't worry, I can, I'll, I'll I can take him out. Okay, kind of okay. Uh, yeah, I'd go for, okay. I'd go for okay. him. Um, and I'll go for um, Battle Fury stance. Okay, perfect. So, you get a plus two bonus on the attack roll because you're flanking, on top of your regular plus eight. Mm -hmm. So you're plus ten currently. Fourteen? Yeah. Sadly, not enough. Dang. He blocks you with his shield. Okay. And then... Uh, Let's see, that's a move action and a standard action. You're pretty much done at this point. Mm -hmm. I will mention at this juncture that all of you have something called an action point. This is a special mm -hmm. gift to heroic characters. Basically, you can spend your action point to get a free action. And it could be a move action to move extra distance, or it could be a free attack. The choice is whether or not you want to spend that action point now or save it. I can only do it once per game. You can do it once every other encounter, basically. So, um, if you spend it in this encounter, you won't have it for the next encounter. I don't need too much to worry about. No, don't worry about it. You've got the cloak on hand, and you haven't okay. even taken any damage yet, have you? Okay, okay. Well, then I won't spend it. Okay. Uh, cleric. Mm. Anvar. Yes. God, I'm just you getting my out again, am I? Well, yeah, nobody's taken a whole lot of damage lately. Uh, mm. You do have some powers uh, that you have. This ability here, Echoes of Thunder, is uh, it's described as, with a prayer to the storm god, you imbue your weapon with the power of thunder as you strike a thunderclap of rat rumbles across the battlefield. It has uh, a little bit more damage than normal. It does 2d8 damage okay. plus four. That's quite a lot more. Is that one off this? That's a one off, however. I don't think we need to waste that yet. Okay. But it's for this encounter. You get it, is it? You get it back next encounter. Hopefully there's a pretty well. quickly down here or somewhere. Okay. Okay. Well, I don't think these guys are the big guys. No. Is this all the same encounter? This is all the same encounter. All right, so yeah. Okay. Yeah. You should, should I save it? it? Just nah, have it use it. Use it. Use, it. use it. use it or lose it. Can I borrow your D8? A clap of Oh, we got to hit him first. Uh, yeah, first thing you want to do is yes. make a D20 roll. And of course we're going to hit him. Add five to the roll. So, do you have your d20 there? Someone's stolen it. Oh, there it is. Okay. It's changed color. You are plus five, and it's verse, versus which of his defenses? I'm sorry, it's uh, versus AC. Thirteen. Plus five is eighteen. That is going to be a hit. So, roll two d8. Plus four, is that? Yeah. Ow. 14. Okay, he takes that damage. He is still up. Not bloodied. Not bloodied yet. Oh, and uh, you had to move there to hit him. Actually, you, you have a choice. You could like move there, or there, or there. Do you have a preference? Uh, the one that gives me the best <laughs> defense. Oh, <laughs> From um, the guy with the arrow. Uh, pr <laughs> yeah. yeah, I guess that's probably best. Yeah, that's good. Because you can always move there on your next turn. <laughs> These guys aren't getting in the way of Mr. Magic Missile Boy, are they? Uh, no. Why am I not? I mean, it's range 10, isn't it? It is range Magic 10. Magic is also a hit, isn't it? Come on, boys. Yes. So, yes, so I Girls. part the curtains. I summon a small bird in my hand, which flies at him at great speed, smacks him in the forehead, and disappears in a burst of sparkles. Nice. And uh, which one are you attacking, this one or the back no, one? The, the one with the bow. Okay. 
since it's auto damage and he's only got one hit point, you take the minion out. And he does not get off another so shot. Third strike. <laughs> third strike. Angry birds. Nice. The elf equivalent of magic missile. Tac Tac. I'm still in the shadows, he probably hasn't noticed me, so if I sneak around behind him, mm -hmm. then I'm just going to attempt to okay. stab him. So, let's see. Um, we could have are you, are you planning to run all the way around, or you're trying to like slip through the dwarf here and get around? Um, I think I have got. Uh, what was it? Is it position? No. One, two, uh, three, four. Might have already used tumble. Something. Six, seven. It might have been tumble. Um, seven to get some shots. Yeah, it's but I'm sure, sure yeah. I can use my allies. Um, yeah, I sort of tumbled okay. past the dwarf right okay. back behind him. Uh, not to retcon a little bit, but since you guys have fought before, um, knowing that that's what you were going to do, you probably could have communicated to the cleric to stand here so you can guarantee a flank. Okay. That's good for you because when you're flanking, you get to do your sneak attack damage on a hit. So, if that's all right with everyone. That's fine with me. Okay. So have I used that one? Uh, that you've used tumble. Yes, that one's spent. Um, and now you're attacking, and if you hit... Don't forget to roll your extra 2d6 damage. Uh-oh. If I do. Um, <laughs> I see basically now there's yeah. Okay. That is a, even with the plus two for flanking, that's not going to be enough to hit him. No. All right. He deflects you as well. He knows I'm there. All right, Hill. What is the salt? Okay. You get a plus two on your attack roll because you are flanking him, and you get a plus one on your attack roll for poised assault. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Yeah, Your dice are weak. Seven, <laughs> 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 is the magic number. 15 is the magic number. Okay. And the damage is a d10 plus 5. 7, 8, 9, 10, 12. Okay. Uh, he has taken 26 points of damage. He is now bloodied, but he is still standing. And he, it is now his turn. How's that rope doing? <laughs> He's not doing anything to him anymore. Uh, he is going to shift to here, get out of that terrible position he's in. Um, okay. Now, there's an ability, be actually before he moves, there's an ability that fighters have, which is called marking your opponent. And this is really a choice between you two guys. Um, you, you can decide when you attack a bad guy if you want to mark him. And what that actually means is you're incentivizing him to attack you instead of anybody else. And he gets penalized, he gets a penalty to attack rolls if he tries to attack anybody else but you. But that's a choice you have to make as a fighter, whether you want to draw that aggro or not. Do either of you guys want to try to mark him? Uh, I'll definitely mark him. Sure, if you want to, I'm yeah. happy to do it. In that case, he will shift over to here, and he will target Hill. Here it comes. That's a 16 versus AC. Yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> not so much? No, I'm not sure. All right. He misses you. Okay. Come on, get it, big boy. Coming around the corner is the boss. Yay. And he's unusual. You see that unlike his kin, who are all brown furred, this guy's fur is arctic white and his eyes are ruby red. And when he comes around the corner... Uh, it's a baby seal. <laughs> <laughs> he says, oh, What do we have here? A halfling? I love halflings. And he says, Snippy, bring me a halfling. And coming around him oh, is this horrid, scorpion-like monstrosity. Snippy. <laughs> <laughs> With a big stinger, and he comes scuttling around and tries to got you right in the, um... snap, its, <laughs> snap its pincers at you. Uh, it rolled a 17 versus armor class. Oh, just under. Oh, darn, for him. Poor Snippy. And uh, he... He's going to use an ability called Taunt and says, uh, Come to me, little halfling, come to me. I won't hurt you too badly. And uh, he is going to try to lure you into him. Uh, he rolled a 21 versus Will. 
Okay, my will is 13, so I think that sounds like a great idea. Yay! Yay! <laughs> no, that's bad. <laughs> and when he tosses you over to him, he then stabs you through with his spear. Uh, however, he only rolled a 16. It doesn't happen. Okay. Uh, he tried to run you through to no avail. And dwarf. These are good fight plans. They can't hit toughly. <laughs> now, unfortunately, by pulling the halfling into him, he has created a barrier uh, between him and you. Okay. But is that an armored back on the on the scorpion? That is. Yeah. Could I run up, jump on top of the scorpion, <laughs> and then hit Do the thing with my axe? <laughs> hit the white albino thing because I think he's the most dangerous. You know. Um, I'll let you do that. Uh, there are possible consequences. <laughs> okay. And let me tell you what those are. You might get, uh, you, can, you can do it if you, I'm going to let you do it if you succeed at an acrobatics check. Mm -hmm. And that's under your dexterity. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of your skills. Yeah, I've got a plus two. There that's you go. No. Um, and uh, it, it could provoke what's called an opportunity attack from the scorpion. The scorpion could get a, an attack against you. But it's very dramatic, and hey, if you want to do it, do it. It sounds so unwise to jump up on its back. That's <laughs> uh, all I'm saying is that very there, brave. there are possible risks, but you'll look remarkably dashing. It's very in character. Will I give it a go? Do it, do it, do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's an Olympic trampoline. The worst that could happen winner. is, you know, you might get stung in the stomach and, like, fall down in a fetal yeah. heap on the floor, quivering and Just trembling a minor and flesh barfing wound. up your guts. Minor flesh wound. <laughs> that's, the, that's the worst that could happen. Good old yeah. poison damage. <laughs> I'll go for it. Yeah. All right. Do it, do it, do it. We'll be so impressed. First okay. thing I'd like you to try to do is to make that all-important acrobatics check. Yeah. And you only got a plus two, so good luck with that. Okay. What do I need? <laughs> uh, you need a ten. I need a ten. Yes. <laughs> oh! <laughs> All right. Yeah. What, you fall over doing this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You, you remember that scene in Live and Let Die when Bond runs across the crocodiles to get off the island? Yeah, this doesn't work out quite as well as that. Uh, you try to scamper over the scorpion and kind of fall, tumble down its form, landing right in front of it, so that when you lift your head up, you're staring at its head and its pincers and its big tail stinger, which tries to snap down and hit you. Uh, the tail stinger rolls a 19 versus AC. Your armor class is 18. That means it stings you. Okay, that, this hasn't done well at all. <laughs> uh, it stings you for 11 points of damage, which comes off your hit points. Okay, there those bandages, Mr. Clark. <laughs> but more importantly is you feel its poison course through your system. Nobody right. likes to see that, do they? All right. And you've got something called ongoing poison damage, which uh. means at the start of your next turn, you will take poison damage. Um, but for now, all that's happened is, is that you tried to uh, get over it and you couldn't, so you're stopped there. Okay. That doesn't mean you can't attack it, however. Oh, I can have another attack? Uh, you, all you've done is move, so you've still got your attack. Oh, the only okay. thing is, the only thing you can attack from there is the scorpion it's itself. The scorpion. Okay, well I'll do that. Okay. Um, I guess I'll go for Battle Fury again. Okay. There. You lock into your Battle Fury stance, uh, make an On attack roll, you get uh, it's just your basic plus eight. Twelve uh, does not get through its armor. Okay. Is poison? Yes. And the Cleric, you're up. I'm selling healing potions. <laughs> 100 gold pieces per. So, Cleric, uh, you, of course, have a number of options. Yeah, I will not be doing the trampoline <laughs> movement. Okay. Uh, you've got a guy standing next to you. That's yeah. your obvious imminent threat. Yeah, um, he's, he's more than blooded, isn't he? He is. He is in very bad shape. I, I think it's my duty to finish him off. All right. And, uh, let the others. Your best tactical move would be to, again, yeah, shift over here so that him. you're flanking. You get yeah. a plus two on your bonus to attack. Okay. So you roll a 20-sided die. You get there a get pl basic plus. Is that okay with you? Even Ooh, though I know yeah, you're yeah. in the jaws of death <laughs> over there. But, uh, I think I'll be okay you know, for a bit. I'm okay. sure I'll be finish this guy and we'll possibly <laughs> come and help you <laughs> yeah. at a price. Okay, here we go. 12. Um, with your bonuses, that's certainly going to hit him. 
Uh, so roll your so, mace damage. Yeah, it's only one now. We don't we yep. have to use our other one up. A super duper mace. Three plus, and what do you add to that? I don't remember. Uh, so plus four. four. Seven, Seven points. Seven is going to be enough to finish him off. Right. He goes down with a scream. And uh, now the dwarf has taken some damage. Um, healing for the cleric is what's called a minor action, so you can do mm-hmm. that in addition to attacking. And you can also do it at range. Right. So you could try to use a healing word on him now if you like. Uh, but that's entirely up to you. Uh, when you use your healing word, here's the card. It's uh, one ally within five squares of you, and that target can spend a healing surge and also gains an additional 1d6 hit points on top of it. So if you were to yeah. use that on him yeah. now, you would spend the healing surge, so you drop to 10 healing surges left. Mm-hmm. Okay. And you'd get back 10 hit points plus a d6. Yeah. If so. you wanted to do it now. If I was to offer it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe or, I will offer it. Or you could save it. I, I mean, will offer it. He's still, got, he's still got a pile of hit points. He's probably not going to be dying Just soon. Yet. So it's really up to you. Well, would you like me to help you? Uh, yeah, well, I guess. I don't know how dangerous this albino is going to be. He looks pretty. He doesn't dangerous. look very nice. He's not a baby <laughs> I'm gonna seal. I'm going to try and distract him. So, um, oh, I think you you might need some help. Okay, and so I'm that kind of guy to help right. out. Cause so, so I've been brought up. Since uh, you took what 11 points of damage, uh, yeah, you're guaranteed to be put back up to full. Okay, so you all okay, your so wounds. Okay, so I've used my away. healing now, words it's, done. Uh, yeah, actually, you've got two of those, so you can keep that card up and use is it. Is my poison time. still? Is the poison still the working? Poison is still working through your system. Okay. No. Uh, so you will take some poison damage on your turn. And wizard, dazzle us. So he's going to walk forward. <gasps> he's going to come out from behind me. <laughs> yes, Surely I not. know. He's revealed himself to the world. Only because Ooh. I have to get closer. Tommy um, Cooper finally two, three, steps four, out. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. I can go to there. Um, <laughs> one, two, three, back up, back up, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right, and then I am going to use a spectral image, and I am going to, without trying to attract too much attention to myself, which is, goes against the grain, it must be said, yep. wave my arms and create a spectral image here, okay. in that square there, actually, no, in that square there, okay. of a, um, an incredibly beautiful elven warrior in shining golden armor with a large sword and a shield who shouts at the albino knoll or whatever it is. Um, hey, Whitey, is it true that blondes have more fun? <laughs> and um, tries to sort of egg him to kind of come and attack him. All right, well done. Tac Tac, you see this scintillating knight appear behind the with good hair. hair. With good hair. Um, I think the good hair thing gave it away, to be honest. Um, I know it's um, Is he turned around? Or? Uh, yes, it doesn't offer you any advantage for him having done so, but uh, he I does seem to be thoroughly distracted by the sudden appearance of the creature behind him. I shall attempt to use Death Trick. Okay. Actually, sorry, if I created it immediately behind him, yes. would that have given the rogue yes. a flank? Absolutely. Would you like to do that? Uh-huh. Okay. Right, I'm sorry, I didn't realize it was... No worries. I'll use this figure just to represent that. I will do it can that. be attacked. Yeah. Uh, so you are now flanking. But I, I want to make it sound like... I don't want it to just sort of... Boink, appear. I want right. to make it sound like he sort of stepped in. Or Absolutely. Anyway, to so create the illusion. It's the attack bonus plus the five, and then plus the two, because I'm technically flanking. Right? Yes. So it's plus seven. Yep. Thirteen plus the seven, twenty. Is it twenty-eight? Whoa. Holy smokes. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, uh, so you're going to hit, um, and you're going to want to roll two d six in addition to regular damage because of your sneak attack. So, and you get the benefits of death strike. Oh, okay. So it's one d six plus four. Yeah. So it's it's sorry, death strike is one d six plus four. Yeah. Okay, and then you get to roll two d six on top of that. Okay, so one d six, five, eight. Okay, and plus four, you said. Oh, no, that was... Oh, you've included that already? Yeah. Okay. Two ones and a two. Oh. That was cool. Okay. Oh, well, never mind. It does say here that he gets an insight check. Yeah, I just rolled that. But he needs a 21. Okay. Um, all right, so you sort of graze him with your sneak attack, 
And he says, Oh, is that the best you got? Is that the best? Come on. And then uh, Hill. Well, Hill, who has just noticed, he has a resist five poison out of it. Oh, you should give it to him. <laughs> Which could be useful. Yes, um, yes. Well, you, Clearly the scorpion was made for you. The, uh, the, the cleric has very kindly removed my last opposition, so I think the, the straightforward thing here would be to move round okay. to the only available slot to uh, crack that scorpion on top of his head. All right, with grandmother's sword. Uh, absolutely. We, um, we'll go for the battle fury stance on this one. So I couldn't find a halfling which actually had a decent sized sword, so I had to improvise a weapon. I approve. I would a, like the uh, grandmother's magic a, a sword. A short sword called Grandmother's Short Sword, which <laughs> hits with the fight with the power of a great sword, even though it's only tiny. It's the kind of thing, thing that would definitely uh, yeah. gone. And I can only imagine what his grandmother was. <laughs> so we've got a twelve plus uh, seven is nineteen. That is going to hit the scorpion. Okay. So I'll take my Battle Fury, which is a D10 plus the 7. Mm -hmm. so that's 16, nine, points. 16 points. Of damage. Well done. Okay, uh, that is actually enough to bloody the scorpion. Mm. And it will attack next. Are you trying to mark it to draw its attention? So you can turn with the idea of blowing my action point. Oh, well, it's having another attack. Um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna mark it. Okay. And I'm also gonna blow my action point so that I get another attack. And we'll do the same again. Um, we'll have to keep the battle fury stance. Okay. Oh, yay! So was the way. So that that was a nine, which is clearly not gonna. Hit. No. Okay. Wah, wah. There we go. Oh, well. Easy come, easy go. The. Are you gonna mark? Oh. I have marked. Oh, okay. Right. In that case, the scorpion will attack Hill. Uh, first with its pincers, going to miss. Then with its stinger. Oh, oh, that there is a natural 20. Natural 20s are critical hits, which deal maximum damage. Um, so it's going to hit you for 14 points of damage. Thank you, thank you. And on top of that, you feel the poison coursing through your body. However, because of your amulet, you are immune. Uh, thank you. Okay. The big albino guy made his insight check <laughs> against the illusion. Uh, but the illusion is still semi-real. I mean, you could still attack it and it still provides flanking. Uh, but he is instead going to go back and focus on the teeny tiny halfling. Uh, Pick on someone your own size. And he misses Yay. with a horrendous roll. Too small. Dwarf. I don't know whether to, to finish off the scorpion or to... Scorpion? Okay, Scorpion. It means we can all then get through, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I guess I'm not sure what the, I'm not sure what the advantages to poised assault are because it says plus one power and then plus two bo power on this. It's it's a choice between whether you want the bonus on your attack roll or you want the bonus on your damage. Poised assault is all about adding to your attack roll, it makes you more accurate. Okay. Whereas Battle Fury is. Oh, okay, All yes, of course, damage. of course. All right, um, I'll, I'll go for attack roll, I'll go okay. for poison assault. Oh, a natural one nice. is a critical miss. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I gave you all of my bad guys, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, would, you like to, miss, would you like to spend your action point, or are you happy you just uh, Yeah, sorry, what's my action point again? What does that uh, It g basically lets you take another action, so you can make another attack, say. Yeah, I will okay. do that. All right. Okay. Nine. A little bit better. Mm. Uh, plus one, ten. Plus eight, is that right? Uh, For your battle axe? Yeah. Uh, there. Yeah, 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 plus okay. eight, sorry. That's going to hit. You get to roll damage. Great. Which, um, sorry. Uh, it's... Uh, D12 plus D12 7. D12 plus 7. That's, that's it. You got it. 16 points. That kills it. Good. Sweet. All right. Nicely done. Cleric. Hey, I'm kind of a bit snookered there. I can't really get through. Uh, you can move through friendly squares. Okay. So if you wanted to, you could get ahead of the fighter. That's a very brave I thing for a cleric to do. It would be, wouldn't it? Some might say foolish, but this is a 
latent barbarian within within his, uh, <laughs> within him that's bursting to come back out. But I guess I've got to play to character and uh, sort of <coughs> play around at the back. Um, yeah. Anyone need any help? Um, anyone got any leaks? He's Anybody he leaking? 14 damage. Yeah, four. I'm 14 off four. So is there a regular? Healing yeah, he's, he's got uh, basically two healing words every encounter that he yeah. can use. He's used one, so he's got one more. Okay. So we can just a, 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 not a regular clerk. What about my storm hammer? What does that do? Storm hammer. Uh, do you have your card there? Yeah. If you want to check that over to me for a second, I'll double check. This is a nat will power, so you can use it as often as you like. As battle rage overcomes you, you sing the litanies of the cleansing storm. Whoa. Uh, okay, so it's an attack. It's a plus five against its fortitude defense. It does lightning and thunder damage. Oh, yeah, when charging, you can use this in place of a melee basic attack. Oh, so this is a good power to have if you're charging an enemy. When you charge, basically what you do is you run at him. You get a plus one on your attack roll for charging. Mm -hmm. And... So you'd be a total of not just plus five, but plus six on the attack roll. And you would do the damage that's listed there. And it's thunder and lightning damage, which is a special kind of damage. It's against its fortitude. Sorry. And it's also against fortitude, which is, tends to be a lower defense, easier to hit. Well, I, I can't help it. You've got I'm to do just, that. All right, just you a... rush up, your hammer starts to crackle with lightning energy, and there's this big rumble that seems to follow you as you run up. Uh, I and, wish I could uh, be you know, a bit more wimpy. Yeah. <laughs> Clerical roll, but... No. And uh, you can make a d20 roll. You yeah. get to add plus six altogether. Seven, Seven plus six is 13, unfortunately, oh, uh, despite oh. all the drama and all the lightning, <laughs> Light. you swing and he gets out of the way and uh, there is no great crack. And I just say, only joking. <laughs> <laughs> no peal of thunder. He snickers. You don't know who you're messing with. Oh, what a coincidence. I'm chaotic evil too. I <laughs> <laughs> read this book. <laughs> Wizard. Right. So, for action, oh, can't. One, go. two, three, four, four five, five, six. six. That's a full move for you. Oh, no, I've got to move seven. Oh, sorry. You're an elf. Pardon you. Excuse me. <laughs> Into there. It's your hollow bones there. It's my hollow bones. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then, from here, can I, can I... You totally can see him. I'm sort of peeking around, trying not to attract attention to myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Only me. I'm sure me. you will momentarily. Um, then using burning hands to create a blast. Okay. Can I center it? Uh, the blast has to start in a, along a side or on a corner of you. So, so if it started it, there... Yeah, so it sort of emanates from that vertex and, and goes... And it comes out like that, yeah. so it won't get any of my charms. Correct. It will get your spectral image. Yeah, that's fine, you can take it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, so okay. uh, what's that? That's burning hands, yeah. and it creates a sort of a swarm of little hummingbirds fly out and explode into, into, into fire. fire. Burning hummingbirds. There's burning hummingbirds. Yeah, yeah. They're little red hummingbirds. Okay. Um, so that's plus five intelligence. Five yeah, plus five versus reflex. No, I like right? birds. I've decided birds. It's all going to be birds. It's versus reflex. Birds. Birds. Okay. Red birds. Well, oh my gosh, okay, that is a crit. So, you do max damage, so you don't have to roll the dice. You just 2d6 plus 4 is 16 damage. Ow. Mm -hmm. All right, that Take bloodies that. him. Uh, you char I his teach pristine you to white ignore fur. My phantasmal doofer. He's now got black marks all over his fur. <laughs> He's <laughs> smoldering. Bad hair, like, I'm telling you. I hate wizards. <laughs> <laughs> Can I then... Um, Take a minor action to shift behind the curtain. <laughs> yes. Oh, no. Uh, no, sh uh, shifting is not a minor action. What? Can I, can I do anything? So... That uh, was my... F I did a full move. smile and say you, sorry. Yes. <laughs> That's about <laughs> it. Pretty much. Yeah. Oh. Tack, tack. Really uh, using death is he bloodied? Okay. Uh, he is bloodied. And charred. Well, probably nothing. And annoyed. <laughs> okay. 20. 20 is a hit. Death strike. 
Uh, six. Ooh, okay. Still up. Bill. Okay. You are not in a position where you can attack it, but you could. You can move through friendly squares to try to get into one of these squares, but you will provoke an opportunity attack from him as you go by, unless you decided to go like one, two, three, four, five, six, and then charge him, like go like. Yeah, um, yeah. I was just saying it. Get yeah, obviously completely around the bank. Uh, a lot getting to there would help the cleric. You would like one, two, three, four, five, six is one move for you, I believe. No, you move five. I'm sorry. Five. So you can't move. Isn't that? One move you can't go right. across the corner there, but you could uh, basically uh, charge around the corner and come at him. Um, and I still get a regular attack from there. Uh, yeah. I was looking at the sudden sprint, which is a minor action for the extra two. Um, but if I oh, can, right. but if I can charge, then I'll yeah, can save it. that for later. Okay. Um, yeah, we're going to go with the charge. Um, we're going to use the place to solve for plus one okay. attack bonus, and um, clearly going to mark him. All right. To draw the fire. So you get a plus one for charging. You get a plus one for poised assault. You get plus two because you're flanking with the cleric. So you're plus four on top of everything else. You are eight, almost certainly going to hit him. 18 plus all those other things yep. you just said. So Bring it. That's a d10 plus the 5. That's correct. This guy's pretty tough. So that's 16. No, sorry. That's 11. 11. 11 okay, he is still standing. All right. On his turn, and he is the last threat left. Oh, he is in a difficult spot. Um... There's something that we forgot with you. <laughs> you have poison going through your body. Oh, yeah. Before I forget that, you take five poison damage. Okay. And what I'd like you to do for me is, after you've marked that off, make a saving throw. And the way this works is you roll a d20, mm -hmm. and you want to get a 10 or higher. If you get a 10 or higher, you, sh you throw off the poison. You, you fight it off. Oh! Okay, so you don't have to worry about that anymore. On his turn... What was I rolling against there? As a matter of uh, curiosity, it's called a saving throw. Uh, you're not rolling against anything. It's okay. basically just a flat roll to try to uh, right get a, uh, an effect. Fifty-fifty 50 chance. Fifty-fifty for most characters. Uh, humans get a, an innate bonus to their roll. Right. Uh, this guy is going to shift here. Good um, call. Good move. He is going to. <laughs> Which side <are> you on? <laughs> he is going to attack you with his spear. He misses, and then he is going to bolt, uh, and in so doing, he is going to provoke an attack of opportunity from both of the halflings. So you guys can make a free attack against him, because he's actually looking pretty hurt, and he doesn't want to hang around anymore. Yes. Uh, he doesn't want to play. 23. 23. Uh, you're both going to hit him. Yay. So roll basic attack damage. Same. That's a one. Is it? All right, sorry. Yep. Um, just six, seven. Okay, you combine your efforts and kill him as he tries to flee. Well done, team. All right. You have slain all of the gnolls, and they lie dead at your feet. Uh, you can see that this, there's not a whole lot of treasure these guys were able to find. Looks like they, were, they got into this complex somehow and were rooting around. But you do notice that the, the albino has two things. One, a bag that appears to be empty, but of fine quality and craftsmanship. Uh, it doesn't look like something you can just buy off the store shelf in your in ye old small town. Uh, you also notice that he has a, a leather strand sewn with pearls. A leather what? A leather strand sewn with pearls. Can I kind of apply my in-depth knowledge of all things arcane. Absolutely, you can make an arcana check. On the pearl one first? Mm -hmm. You can make one roll for both of them or you can roll separately, your choice. Uh, I'll roll them okay. separately. Uh, <laughs> that's, well, that's 19. Uh, the strand of pearls looks non-magical. Uh, it looks like it might have been some kind of animal collar at one point. Uh, mm -hmm. But the pearls themselves are quite valuable. They look like they're worth about 100 gold each. I could look after that for you. 
No, it's all right. I'll, I have a feeling about this back. How from you? How are you? Who are you on it? <laughs> just because. Just You're checking, checking it, out. it out. I'm just checking <laughs> it. Well, it would, no, it would be a shame to split it into an object of art. Look, this is not the place to argue. <laughs> Perfect place right, to argue. <laughs> And I get 23 for that. The bag, on the other hand, is clearly magical, and you recognize it as a bag of holding. Yay. When you open it up, it's got a small extra-dimensional space inside that can contain far more than it would seem possible. Almost 500 pounds of material can be contained in this bag. Is there anything in there at the moment? <laughs> <laughs> when you look inside, you see that it is... When you reach inside and you kind of feel around, you see it is empty. But a great way to store your loot. Yeah. Stick some loot in it. Absolutely. Yeah. My hairbrush. Excellent. And all my product. And uh, that's all you're able to loot off of the uh, knolls. Okay. What about the thing that they were smashing up? That is an altar with a hollow interior, and you can see inside the altar are some uh, lacquered bones. They look like bones of some large creature that have been essentially treated and placed in the altar, possibly as some sort of token way of empowering the altar. Is there any way to work out sort of the size of the animal? Or? Uh, you can make a nature check, which is a skill, to try to figure out what sort of creature mm -hmm. this may have been. That's fine. Nature is listed under wisdom. That's an 18. An 18 is pretty darn good. 19. 19? I think. Uh, yeah. You can ascertain that these are the bones of a minotaur. Mm -hmm. Okay. What? was the shrine to? The shrine was to a... Uh, the, the shrine is actually surprising because um, you... Minotaur gods, you don't know what the minotaurs worship necessarily, uh, but the, the shrine seems to have been dedicated to Kord, the god of storms. Ah, I do believe I worship Kord. Yes, you do. And you think that if you... If this altar were still intact, if they hadn't desecrated it, you could have performed a small prayer here to give you and your colleagues some kind of boon. Uh, but alas, uh, not anymore. These, Can we fix it? These knolls have defiled it. Um, it is not simply a matter of fixing it. This uh, place would need to be reconsecrated. Yeah. Who's keeping the bag of holding? Who would like the bag of oh, holding? I'll have it at the back of the party. It's a very thiefy thing to have, isn't it? I think I... Uh, Do you want to hang on to it? I probably oh, would fight air, you for it. Can I use a search just to get some um, hit points back at this stage? Uh, if yes. I, if I say I'll keep your head, you sure can. can I have the bag of holding? Mm, well, I'm going to give you the, the smaller set. Obviously, yeah. I need okay. some of the yeah. stuff with me. Since, uh, it's, the, since it's the end of the encounter, if you've taken any damage, you can mark off one of your healing surges to basically heal up to full if you want. Oh, okay, yeah. You don't have to, but... It's advised. Yeah, yeah, we're back. Can we just not forget about these pearls before we start? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. There are five of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we distribute them then. <laughs> All right, so you each get 100 gold and pearls. This, this are cool that we went past. Yeah. What is this? That is another altar. Um, there is no sort of uh, indication of who it might be uh, made for. In fact, it looks like that it wasn't consecrated at all. Like, whoever built this place didn't have a chance to, to do anything with it. Is this door still open? It is. Whilst we're sort of loitering, okay. can I just have a little peek yep. through that door? Is there, there any merits looking at those rooms? Yeah, I've been wondering about them. Those? Yeah, you can certainly study them and, and ascertain that they do have some kind of magical effect. Uh, you're not, further scrutiny might reveal more, but that's all you know at the outset. Uh, beyond the doors, you see a pair of lit braziers. Okay. As well as several more doors. No, the beasties. Yeah. Do you want me to have a look at these ruins? Yes. Without touching, stepping, or otherwise invoking them. 21. Okay. Um, you believe that these runes have some teleportative ability for uh, helping to get around the dungeon more quickly. Yeah, okay. Oh, I want to jump on. Does he need to do another roll to see how they work? When? Uh, all you have to do is stand on them. Wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> good thing we have, you avoided them jumping. when you were stabbing the... I wonder where they go. Do you think they go to the other room? Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. Obviously. <laughs> that would be slightly pointless. <laughs> it's kind of like they're just testing. Yeah. <laughs> testing them, you know, yeah. proof of concept. Well, they could exactly. have plans for more, but then something horrible happened, you know. 
I want to yeah. jump on the runes. Should we all jump on the runes? So you jump on one and you end up on uh, the other. You said you rolled a 23, you said? Uh, right? 21. 21, okay. Uh, you can also ascertain in this particular room that three of the runes seem to be somewhat uh, malfunctioning. <laughs> <laughs> They weren't inscribed properly, or they, the magic wasn't quite set right, or it was rushed or something, but it, the magic has decayed to the point where it's not necessarily a guarantee that you'll end up where the <coughs> creator intended. Or if you do, you might end up in different places. Possible. Or so whatever. Or in different go. pieces. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> Should we investigate the other one? Yeah, your leg yeah. comes over here, your arm's over here. Uh, this door, unlike the big doors, doesn't have any sort of special key mechanism, so you can pretty much just go over and check it out. The, make another roll. Fifteen. Okay. Should I get a bonus? You can time? ascertain that these these ruins uh, have this have similar magical effects, but you can't ascertain if any of them are damaged or degraded. Right. So which is the good one on that? We know that one one's that good. One. The rest of yeah. Dodge. Correct. Well, before we start doing that, do we really want to go to some random location? <laughs> no, it's There was amazing. promise of a locked door that I could try. <laughs> to be fair. But we should go and have, we should look in here. We don't know what else might be uh, in there. And also, can, can't we get through this door? Today? This door has one of those locked keys on oh. it. So it would, you could get through it, but it would take either an arcana check or a thievery check. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll probably best. fail now. I mean but. obviously if you fail I'll be able to do it, but so. Uh eighteen. Uh that does not allow you to get through. But you think oh, you are okay. close. But it's fine. I tried. Well, let That's me all have I want. Try. Should I have a try? <laughs> yes. Eleven. <laughs> Natural one. This door has thwarted you both. Does a magic Should we just not talk you know, about this again? <laughs> You should hang around and have another go, and then hang around a bit more and have another go. No, we won't <laughs> talk about this ever. I think we should get onto the braziers. I mean, I, that's where I the agree. dragon was and the treasure was from the other dungeon. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Let's head and, and also see what the... And the area, it seems, so we might just be able to get yeah, some information. Let's get some benefit from what we were doing. Uh, when you pour into this area, you see that, uh, apart from the braziers, there is a pool. It looked like it might have been created as some sort of scrying pool um, over in the back corner there. Uh, you can also see evidence that the gnolls have tried to settle here, that they've got basically the workings of just piled crap that they're using as sort of crude sleeping beds and nests that they've gathered um, or brought with them. Uh, but there's no, since you've killed them all, uh, there doesn't seem to be any lingering threat here. Any, um, is there anything hidden? Do, can we make a quick search to see if this something absolutely uh, that would require a perception check on your parts perception is one of your skills listed under wisdom okay and it's a d20 plus your bonus plus two all right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow i don't really want to go reading through no crap there might be something of value you never know well if you guys rolled i'm only a plus one so i haven't been bothered oh, rolling okay yet. okay okay seven so, uh, happy oh, now dear Oh my god. <laughs> okay, we, we you guys find nothing. <laughs> That's because I was only doing In fact, you kind of lose each other for a while. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the things you notice uh, these doors here, the sort of pale ones, are ordinary doors. It's once you get to the dark ones that you get to the key locked ones that require some sort of magical or mundane bypass. Is there any evidence of how the gnolls actually got in and out? Uh, yes, you believe that they came through these doors that lead off the map. You see beyond those doors is a long passage that will eventually take you out into the world whence they came. Um, Let's go that way. <laughs> <laughs> off the map you go. <laughs> <laughs> you see a starry void. Okay. And suddenly we're back in the room again. Yeah. We check out the pool. Is okay. Anything unusual about the pool? Uh, the pool has some innate, uh, some magical ruins carved around the outside ring of it, um, and uh, some ornamentation to suggest that the Minotaurs were actually fairly civilized. Uh, and you can see. The, the workmanship, little tiny minotaurs doing little tiny crafts around the carved into the side of the pool. Your best guess, though, is that with an arcana check, you might be able to activate this pool to spy on other areas of the dungeon. Go for it. Let's do it. Security check. Yeah. But you have to be over there. Fifteen. Fifteen. Right. Okay. 
So, uh, with a 15, you're able to cause the pool to scintillate and become very, very bright. And when you concentrate, um, since you don't... Uh, is there a particular area of the dungeon, since you actually have a map, that you would like to focus your attention on? You get basically one location. This was the other hotspot from the previous mm -hmm. world, but I don't know if it'll be... What was in this room previously? Uh, that was basically just a chessboard chess pattern on the floor, but nothing. We don't, we don't have access to this kind of Yeah, we can get through here. I yeah. mean, there's no point in right. trying that. Let's look mm. at the most farthest away place yeah. away that looks the most interesting. Either that room or that room. Votes? I'm for here. Are we, is this a mirror inversion completely, or are we assuming that the hotspots in the last one would be the hotspots in this one? Oh, yeah. well, well, not necessarily. Yeah, there could be completely different. different. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah. It was sort of like... Other than, the, other than the actual physical configuration of the area, there's, there's no real comparisons you can draw. I'll go with that room. Okay. When you scry on that room, you see two horned figures sitting at a table, and they're playing some sort of game of cards, and there are like little dragon pictures on the cards, and like they're, you can see that each of them is cheating in about three different ways. They've got cards stuffed in their boots, they've got cards under their buttockses, uh, and they don't seem to care. Uh, they've got bows over the back of their chair, and they've got little pipes off their belts, and uh, they seem to be having What's a rolling good time. Uh, they look like satyrs, or do satyrs. They look malevolent, or...? Um, they currently do not look terribly malevolent. Uh, if you want to sort of plumb the depths of your memories for what satyrs can be or what they can do, that would be a nature or arcana check, your choice. 16 arcana. Okay. Uh, 12 arcana. Okay. A 16 is enough to know that uh, satyrs are beings native to the Feywild. They are sort of a prancing, cavorting, joking lot most of the time, uh, but they have this sort of menacing side to them that uh, sometimes they can... Streak. They do have a malevolent streak. Uh, they are known for their ability to charm and seduce, either through music or through words. Okay. Well, there you go. And what is can we quickly thing? check these rooms? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the gnolls have sort of... Uh, confiscated those rooms as well and kind of disrupted the contents a little bit. Uh, aside from a couple urns in the other room and another fiery brazier over here, the only other feature of interest is basically a glowing ruin carved on the floor, which you ascertain as the symbol of ba uh, Baphomet, a, a minotaur demon prince. Baphomet. Baphomet, yeah. Okay. Right. Well, let's not step on that. Should we... Um, now, you can use the pool as often as you like to scry in other areas, but you have to make a separate arcana check each time, oh, and you do happen. believe there might be a consequence for failure. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Flick the channels. <laughs> we'll stand over here. <laughs> yeah, you stand I've back. got plenty of healing potions. I'll try again, then. Is there anything All right. on the chessboard, please? Where else? Should, well, let's try again. Where should we try this time? Chessboard, or that one with Statue? all the statues? That might be quite interesting. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Statue room. Yeah. Statue room? Mm -hmm. What's that a statue of? Uh, you'll know if you okay. scry there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Some sort of hero. Uh, Twenty-four. Uh, another success. When you scry in that room, you can see, uh, despite its actual appearance, it actually looks like a minotaur statue, and in fact, it looks just like this: a giant bronze minotaur with a great axe raised um, stands almost floor to ceiling in this room. Uh, and it's right across from an altar in a niche, and the altar is carved with all kinds of iconography to suggest, again, tied to minotaurs somehow. Uh, Any people? There is no one in the room. Keep going, keep going. <laughs> we do it again. Okay. That about the boring one? That could so have all Just to say, wouldn't, isn't that going to be somewhere where we can get that, what that was about to do to us? Maybe. This, this well, uh, sorry, who was this dedicated to again? Uh, you're not exactly sure. But it's not some, court, no, then? No, it's not Oh, court. I'm sorry. So it's not easy. We've got to plan a route if we're going to go over there, aren't we? No, no, I, I, was, just, I was just wondering well, whether we're that. we're trying to find this sort of like a or whatever it's called. Thera, yeah. She's well, let me try again. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, keep going until one, my head The boring one, one, the boring one. <laughs> All right. Hey. The boring one's going to have the best rewards. Fifteen, good. Twenty-five. All right. 
Um, you see a couple things in that room. The floor tiles have broken up and plants have erupted out of the floor in the room. There is a gnarly plant there. Gnarly plant. There's another gnarly plant there. And there's another gnarly plant there. They look exactly like that, these sort of horrid, twisted trees that have just <laughs> grown up into the room and started to spread their branches so out and about. We would have been trapped if we brought in there, I guess. So it's kind of like keep going, keep band. going, my son. Can we see again? You're on a winner here. Nothing else this one. Nothing else about <laughs> this, looks <laughs> this looks exciting. This looks exciting. Over here. Yeah. Uh, nothing you've... that you can see looks you... alive there other than the trees. Of you've, got, you've got it within you. <laughs> Are they sort of, like, um, they're just really gnarly looking trees? Mm -hmm. If we walked in here, they'd go spread about and then they'd have attacked us. They'd have gone grippy How grippy. they're growing in the underground, you have absolutely no idea. And we don't care. Well, no, because <laughs> I'm, I'm just thinking, because she's, yeah. she would, she said she, they said she'd disguise herself as something as monstrous as possible. And if you had to disguise something, I'm sorry, I'm just... Yeah, but she said animals. This is not animal, this is tree. Well, we could get closer and it could turn into something really nasty, I suppose. Or it could be something... Well, well I don't know. We don't know anything about, about... I mean, can I make a perception or something to tell if one of them no, just is <laughs> over here? Yeah, yeah, let's, keep, let's keep looking. Uh, uh, still scrying that room? You absolutely can. Uh, what would that be? Perception, perception. yeah? Perception, yep. Plus five. Seventeen. Uh, nothing strikes you as... Okay. Right. Channel. Channel. Where are we going? Here. Yeah. Yeah, that's a bit okay. You see, oh, natural 20. 20. I see all, right. all the rooms instantaneously. <laughs> uh, you see a monster uh, rifling around. It looks just like this. Uh, now that is rifling. a thing. Yeah. And uh, it, it looks like a comp some sort of horrid there's abomination of a bear and an owl. <laughs> there is if I've ever saw, saw yeah. that. So is. is this monster acting in the way you might assume a monster? It seems to be rooting of? through some supplies and stuff, uh, and sort of uh, being surprisingly gentle with them. <laughs> and <laughs> it's got Cathera. around its neck a small sort of wooden talisman. Ah, uh, Cathera. She looked like she's missing two wimpy druids. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind of wee druids. <laughs> Yeah, she looks like she could use some help, and she regrets not having any. Right, well, let's go and find... Let's go back Before we, we go, go through there. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. And then we can start jumping on the... You boys have got to somehow get through that door yeah. with your magical problem. powers. Not. Do you want to double back the way you came and try to, like, yeah. get through this door here? Yeah. Okay, let's is, assume that you're there. Is the um, glowy magic doofus still there? This? Yeah. It is, yeah. Now, you tried first last time, so I think I should okay, try first this time. Thirteen. No. A little room that we didn't check. You know what? It's going to be brimmed full of <laughs> monsters and God knows what else. Three, three, twenty-one. Uh, that is going to do it. Click. Click. The door is open. There's a magical flash around the edges of the door as they part, as if you have just temporarily dispelled some effect. All right. Okay. Um, and uh, when you no step way. through, you see a room uh, that looks like it doesn't have much there. Uh, there's just some iconography in the walls. Uh, this door is open, and you hear sounds of a large creature rifling through stuff. Did we take anything from those... Uh, Got the map. No, the t t right, as proof, I mean, to show her. Yeah. We killed your mates and we've nicked the map. <laughs> We've got the guy's oh, name yeah. and oh, yeah, her, what yeah. her orders were. Okay. So, okay. I don't know if maybe anyone Maybe this wants creature to ate Cathera and put <laughs> yeah. on her jewellery. Hmm. We'll find out soon yeah. enough, but I'll be at the back. So, do we, do we call that an in or do we move closer? I would, I would we'll just go. Right. We don't want to give her a fright. Cathera, where are you? Uh, the rifling stops. <laughs> a large creature sticks its head through the door, sees you, and says, Oh, are you? <laughs> We are your friends. Uh, we were meeting with your um, colleagues, the other druids that you left in the other dungeon, and they were worried about you. And we, hey, Sancho. Uh, yes, they did, because you've been gone for rather longer than they'd expected. Make a diplomacy check to try to convince her that what you're saying is true. Oh, this is under charisma. Oh, no. I've got plus eight. Me. I guess I have to do it, don't I? Because I'm the one talking. Yeah, I suspect the, the elf is probably the 
What's that? Um, nine. Nine. Seventeen. I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she says, why don't you go search down that hall? Tell me what you find. Which hall? Um, so. Why should we do that? What are you looking for? Well, to make yourself useful. That's why you're here, right? Um, uh, well, what are we... you looking for? She says, I am looking for the mysteries of the ages. Mm. Fruit cake. <laughs> she says, I'm looking for the secrets to natural wonders. Do you, would she be useful? Seeds. Anything. Have you seen, do you know there are some strange plant growth in the room down this way? Have you been there? She says, have you seen these? Plant things? growth? No. Are uh, these strange kind of trees growing up out of the floor? That's extraordinary. Maybe you should come with. Extraordinary. She waltzes over this gigantic hulking beast and she says, Through the very small door. How did you find this? Oh, just the uh, thing I do. I scried it. She pats you on the head with her big paw. Well, Dan <laughs> muffles your hair. <laughs> 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 and, uh. She says. She could do it with a comb, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure I've got one in the bag of holding. It's got your hair supplies in. So. Yeah. I was looking forward to exploring this place on my own. But I can see you have your uses. <laughs> yes. Good. We can see you two and have your use. I see you can open doors without the key. Yes. Some of us. Do you have the key? She says, she lowers her head down and says, you can remove it from my neck. And you see this wooden talisman, uh, this circular pendant really, on the end of the uh, strand, of the string that she's wearing around her neck. And... Uh, when you hold it, it's just a heavy piece of wood that you can set into an indentation on the door that causes the door's magical mechanisms to unlock. Well, should we go and look at these um, trees? Says, then I'm quite Why interested. don't we go and look at these trees? Just what I was I thinking. Oh, you, young lady. Um, is she, she's pretty big in this form. She's is gigantic, yeah. Is she useful as a fighter, or does, do we get the impression that actually she should be at the back? Um, it. If she is genuinely assuming this form, you think she'd be pretty formidable. Um, and, but she also has, because she's a large creature, she can reach. So if she's standing a rank behind you, she can still attack things over you. Okay. So she has that advantage. Do you want the key? All right. Well, if she thinks she should go behind, then I She guess. says, I see you found the gnolls. Bothersome, disgusting creatures. Yes, we dealt with them. The only way that was fit. I was very quiet. They didn't see me at all. <laughs> yeah, it's because you're so small. Yeah, very clever of you. Um, well, should we go down this hallway then? Yes, lead on. Use the key. Use the key. Yeah, I, was, okay. I was thinking the Norse might have got those magical things off her. But clearly they haven't, if she's a thing avoiding them. Ooh. So I am... Um, yes, the Minotaur has built this place almost 500 years ago. <laughs> and it was a happy time. <laughs> they were cavorting through the forest. And they found us when they found a sacred hill built on a site where portals converge. Happy sounds. <laughs> the party soundtrack. And uh I don't even use this for my phone, my Blackberry. No worries. No one's got that number. Sorry about uh, that. We have to uh, it brought rewind. A, brought a moment of cheer. <laughs> and uh, next up, she says, but enough talking about the dead. Let's see what other mysteries and treasures are here. Indeed. Lead on. I open the door in front of me. Do you use the key or do you use your magic? I use the key. All right. My fool. When you do that, uh, light flares around the door briefly, and then they unlock before your eyes. And uh, be beyond, you see a passageway and a tattered carpet. Did the doors remain open? They do. We might as well just uh, open this just for
for later in case we have to run it. <laughs> <laughs> Good thinking. Yeah. I'll open that door. Clink, clink. All right. Uh, and um, suggest maybe she'd like to go first. <laughs> she says. Ladies and all that. Mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <all right. laughs> Okay, I'm so with Dory is already halfway down the corridor. He, he's not very good on the old diplomacy thing, so I'm, I'm moving on. Oh, you're moving yeah. on? Yeah, okay. I'll wait for him to go afraid. Make a perception check to see if you notice anything up ahead. Eight and one, which is nine. Okay. So, um, not so much. Probably mm -hmm. ignorant right. to anything. Uh, when you advance, you, you hit something that feels like uh, almost like an invisible barrier in front of you, like you didn't see it until you walked into it. And then suddenly you're sort of engulfed by it. Oh dear. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh poop. All right. Oh, look. Nobody wants uh, to see that. Though the rest of you just sort of see this kind of, sh this shimmer in the hallway ahead. And then he gets sort of absorbed into it and he becomes all sort of distorted. So as you walk into the gelatinous cube, you are pulled inside. Uh, the inside of this thing has a corrosive element to it. it does. So it'll clean it all your arm. And uh, let me get to the stats here. Oh no, oh my grandmother's great sword. All right. Ah, uh, here it comes. Uh, it does a total of uh, 15 oh, points of acid damage. Okay. As just where I healed up. Pulled inside. Um, All right. Are these guys? Are these things sus susceptible? Susceptible to anything in particular? Uh, to know that would require a dungeoneering check, which is under your intelligence. Twenty-four. No, it's wisdom. Oh, it's wisdom. Sorry. Okay. Twenty-four. Uh, are they susceptible to anything? Um, not particularly. They have no special weaknesses. They can be attacked. Uh, just like any monster can. Okay. Um, well. okay. They um, are uh, slow. Attack you from the inside. Very slow. <laughs> so we can like we can just jelly. hit it with axes. And yeah. Stuff. You absolutely <laughs> could. Oh, yeah. What mace can do, but never yeah. mind. All right. Let's charge. I guess. Okay. Um, do we need to be careful to not hurt um, our companion? Uh, no, not really. Okay. What do you mean? We don't need to be careful to hurt them. <laughs> <laughs> we can just go ahead and... I'm coming Jello. I can take it. So let's roll initiative to see who goes first against this creature. And she says, it's oh. a gelatinous cube. Two. She's grating on me. <laughs> Did she want to put it in the bag of holding? Um, <laughs> uh, so we had a... Two. Two. Three for me. Yikes. How's your initiative? Uh, a sum total of six. Good lord. Hill? Uh, Initiative from inside the cube. Yes, absolutely. Okay, uh, 16, 20, 23. 23, and Tac Tac. 11. 11. That would make okay. sense. You have been Hill, by... you go first. You realize to your dismay you're inside a creature being digested. Oh, booker. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, here's, here's the bad news. At the start of your turn, you take five more acid damage while you're in this thing. So that comes off immediately. Okay. And you are dazed, which means you can only take one action. So you can move, or you can attack, or you can try something else, but that's it. I'm thinking move is probably good in a kind of reverse kind of... You're, you're technically sort of in this thing's... You're sort of grabbed by its uh, gelatinous yeah. form. Uh, in order to escape this thing, you have to make what's called an escape check. And it's a move action, so you're sort of trying to move, pull your way out. Okay. In order to do that, I need you to make, and it's your choice, either an athletics check to rely on sheer brute force to force your way out, and that's under strength. Okay. Or an acrobatics check under dexterity to try to, try to sort of shimmy and slide your way out. Okay. Um, Obviously, you want to go with whatever's best for you, which um, would be plus athletics. Plus nine athletics. Okay. So we'll do an athletics check. It's 12 plus 9, which is 21. That is, as, that is a success. You can choose what adjacent square you want to be pulled out into. Um, 
uh, well. So right now, this thing is occupying those four squares. So you could pull yourself out into this square, this square, or any of those. Okay, well, uh, you know, military tactics not being one of my strongest points, I'm going to pull myself out over here. All right. <laughs> you see him pull himself out of the cube over there, and it is the cube's turn. It will just attack you from where you are. Cool. Uh, and it will extrude a pseudopod to try to grab you. Uh -oh. And uh, I think it's going to hit you with a 24 versus fortitude. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's going to pull you in. It does uh, 10 points of damage. Okay. Ooh. I'm going down fast here, guys. <laughs> what are you on? I'm down to five. What am I? And it pulls you back in. Oh. What shall you meet? You need to do a healing. Healing word, maybe. Can you heal him within there? Uh, no, he's got. You've got to get him out of there. Okay. Okay. Who's the crap out of this? Yeah, Next up is the dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I charge and ah! no, no. hit him with my. Uh, <laughs> <just blue. laughs> um, and I think I'll, I'll <laughs> use my power strike. Um. <laughs> Okay. It's with Power Strike and, and Battle yeah. Fury. I'm sure I can't use this. I figure this thing is probably easy to hit. Uh -huh. easy yes. To so, um, I do I turn this over once I've used? Uh, yeah. Yeah. He can okay. probably shake it more than I can. All right. Eight. Nice. Yes. That's going to do it. Roll your damage and don't forget your extra oh, dice. Uh, so it's 2d12. 2d12. Here, I'll give you another d12. That's 20 right there, okay, and then you add to that a 7. seven. So, wow. Okay, you wail on it for 27 points of damage. Ow. You cut a big gash into its form. It is still alive. 27? Yep. Is it bloody? How did you do that? Not yet. It's a big lump of jelly. <laughs> it's not bloody. It's got, it's got a big bucket of load of hit points. No. Got a slice out of it. Okay. Oh, is it me? Uh, it is your turn, Cleric. This is just... Since I took a big slice out of it, is it possible to <laughs> yank as a second move to, to, to yank my friend out of, out of there? Um, I will let you do that, but uh, you'll be re reaching into its acidic core and taking damage. I'll take a bit of damage. Okay. Yeah. When you what reach in and grab him, uh, you take five acid damage okay. and you pull him out. Okay. I'm down to zero at the start of the next turn it comes to the Yeah. And also, I don't know whether I can do this or not, but can I make it, what's that thing where I can make it focus on me? Uh, marking. Can I do that? Yeah. I'll do that as well. Okay. There we go. And <laughs> cleric. <laughs> well, I can't reach now. Okay. That is true. But I can heal. Yeah. I can do it, so I'd be much appreciated. You can me. All right. Um... All right, so healing word, uh, you just choose to spend it as yep. a minor action, and you can spend a healing surge, yep. and you get back, so you spend one of those, yep. you get back eight. eight plus a d6. So, Ian, if you could roll a d6, this is how much extra my points my you get. My name's Anvar, actually. Anvar, sorry. <laughs> Four. So you get 12 back. Okay, that's a little better. That is. Death is a little less in imminent. Uh, Anvar, that was only a minor action for you, so you can still move and attack, although you really aren't in range to attack. No, no, I think we'll let people with good swords do all that slicing stuff, slicing and dicing. You'll hang back for now? That is wise. Wizard? Oh, what to do, what to do. You think your illusions will have very little effect on this creature because it yeah. cannot actually see. Hit it with the birds. Hit it with the birds. Or birds. Mm. Um, Burning jelly sounds like a band. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Right, so in an attempt to create more, I'm going to use a freezing, I'm going to use a bird burst. <laughs> <laughs> sounds lovely. Freezing So this is a, this is a partridge which flies and explodes in a load of ice cubes. Okay. Um, can I do that? Yep. It's a burst one within ten squares. Can I... Get over the top of this thing? Yes, because so the ceiling kind of, is slightly higher than the It's kind creature. of a... Yes, yeah, so you just... <laughs> I drop the parch. I punt it. 
<laughs> off it goes. It explodes into ice cubes. <laughs> and, and lands then behind and explodes. You have um, to make an attack roll. So this is plus five versus its reflexes, which I'm hoping are really rubbish. They're really bad. <laughs> so that's oh, 18. Good. That's going to hit. And this does a d6 plus four. So hopefully it does more than my... Um, no, it does less oh. than the magic missile. <laughs> okay. Any, uh, what's five. the other effect? If there's any other effect. Uh, oh, hang on. And you slide your target one square. What that, that means mean? uh, you can move it one square any direction you want. So you can push it back. That's quite impressive. Yeah, I'll do that. All right. It sort of slides back on the ice that's formed Slips back all with. over the floor. Splendid. That creates a bit of an opening. Sneak around. So, tack tack. You can't quite sneak around it yet oh. because you can't cut that hard corner. Uh, but you do have the option of bravely running up into it. <laughs> <laughs> it What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm a fool. Um, yeah, I will go in front of the dwarf and the fighter and just attempt to death strike it. You are so brave. Or foolish. Mm -hmm. Or wanting treasure. <laughs> 15. 15 is going to hit. Yay! Just after all, just a big lump of <laughs> yes. bloody jelly. Ah, 10 points of damage. Well done. Yay. Still not bloodied, though. Oh, this thing's got a bag of hit points. That's all it's got. All right. Brave halfling, <whistles> whose, whose flesh is somewhat... Sizzling. Sizzling. Yeah, 17's a little low. I mean, I want to dive in there, but this thing's not bloodied, so... Oh, it won't attack you again. It'll attack me. So you might be kind of... It might be good to hang around and... Well, it could attack him. It would just be at a penalty to hit him because it's not attacking you. Well, think of it this way. When it grows back, it'll be all looking in fresh and pink. And... There you go. Yeah. Um, I think we're, we're going with the whole hitting thing, aren't we, at the moment. So um, I will step forward. Um, the two I'll... halflings in the front. Absolutely. I'll, I'll take the Battle Yay! Fury stance. So it's okay. plus two on the damage. Yep. Um, the attack is two plus oh. seven, which is nine. Sadly, that will not hit this thing. Sorry. <laughs> you cannot hit the broadside of a gelatinous cube. <laughs> okay. I'm still a bit sizzling. Yeah, you are. You are. All right. Uh, she will endeavor to, well, she can't get close enough to hit it this round, but she will move up to here. And she will use a healing word on you as well. Oh, awesome. Uh, so you can spend another healing surge. Okay. And on top of that, you get a bonus four extra hit points. So you get back another 12. 29. And that's all that she will do. Healthier. The cube then will attack. Well, it's going to be a minus two, whichever person it attacks. So let's say odd, even. Even. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a taste for you Yay. now. All right. It rolled a nine plus eight is 17 versus fortitude. On the nose. Okay. You're going to get engulfed again. So I'll just put you up there for now. <laughs> and uh, when it pulls you into its flesh, it does a total does a total of fourteen acid damage. Uh, it's down to fifteen. Okay. And yours should have stayed. Okay. Now, it is going to do something again. It is going to move, and when it moves, it's going to provoke an attack of opportunity from you. So you can make your attack against it. It's a basic attack, so it's just your standard dagger attack. Uh, um, your basic attack uh, first. Yeah. Okay. Plus eight, twenty-two. That's going to hit. So D four plus. How would that go? That's um, one. Four. one. Oh. Um, plus. Sorry, six. So okay. seven. All right. It'll take that and it will slide. One, two. Three. You'll slide back there. It's going off with its little It's taking its snack. food and going off to eat. <laughs> and it is done. And uh, next up is the dwarf. Okay, another charge. A run okay. towards it. Uh, what square would you like to end in? Would you like to be like here or here? Yeah, I want to give everyone room. Put me over to the far right. Oh, okay. Um, and uh, again, I'll take Battle Fury. Mm -hmm. So. That's going to do it. Yep. Roll your damage. And what is it? D sorry, D12 plus 7. And plus 2. D12 plus 9. Yep. 17. 
That bloodies it at last. All right, insofar as these things can be bloodied. And again, can I try and pull out? Uh, yeah, if you want to take another five acid damage, you can yep. pull them out of there. Yep. <laughs> and this time you should run, I guess. <laughs> okay. Cleric. Mm. You're at the back of the team now. Yeah, don't like being there. But not Do a lot the of options. Thing again. A move charge action, him? five squares, gets you to here. The storm hammer. That's his charge thing, isn't it? You could also charge up and yeah, make a storm hammer my, attack. But my fortitude is pretty useless and 30 hit points. No, it's against his it's against the monster's he's fortitude. fortitude. Oh, he's, yeah, right. yeah, I don't know what his fortitude is. Fortitude is his best defense, but it's still not fantastic. I think it's time for storm hammer to shine. Call down the gods. <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm going to do it anyway, don't you? Yeah, <laughs> I think you should. It's in my blood. So That's right. Right. You charge. The corner. It didn't work it last me. time. Stay on the corner so that All I right. can um, do stuff. So D20. Yep, and plus five. Uh, plus one for charging, so plus six total. Seven, twelve, thirteen. That misses its fortitude defense, sadly. Again, again. Again, no peal of thunder. It offers so much and delivers Damn so little. Damn squid. <laughs> Damn squid. Such is the fate of the die. No How can it be called a storm hammer? It's a, <laughs> yeah. a fart yeah. hammer. Yeah. Please. I can get to there. Triple A buff is not included. Yes. <laughs> I duck under. Dribble. <laughs> duck under her. Duck under, excuse me, madam. Yeah. And. Um, just one. Two, She'll ruffle it? your hair as you go by. <laughs> she looks like I a might have horror. to stop to <laughs> sort out my hair. That will be my minor action. I pause, <laughs> sort my hair, carry on. I get to there. What a brave wizard! Look at that. We like that. No, it's just that you guys just—I need to sort this out. Um, and then I'm going to use the burning hand. Okay. Which will be. Yeah. I want to see those fingers. Burn them. Mm, little birdies. <laughs> <laughs> they all kind of get bent and they stuck in inside. I love that. So that is a good um, image. reflexes, which I suspect is poor. Crabby, yes. 21. Yep. And that That's going to be hit. 2d6 plus 4. 6, 10. Ten. Looks a bit better. All right. Run away! They explode inside its form. Bits of gelatinous acidic goo go flying off in all directions, but the creature is still intact. And tac tac. Um, I think if I move right sort of next to the wizard. Um, yeah, and actually next to it. Yep. Oh, one more? Yeah, sorry. Okay. And then use backstab. Okay. Yes, you are currently flanking. What is his back? <laughs> with the dwarf. <laughs> Alright, so I get plus two as well. Yes. Yeah. Backstab. How does that work? Actually, no, you're not. You have to be. You want to be like here to flank with the dwarf because you have to be on opposite sides of the creature. All right, okay, so it's just normal um, plus three because yeah. I'm trying to use backstab. Did you want to tumble over there to avoid taking an opportunity attack? Use your tumble. Yes, I yeah. shall use the tumble, okay. and then I shall use the backstab. Splendid. And I'm going to fail my roll because that's how it happens. No, don't Two say that. Two. Fifteen. Twenty-three. Twenty-six. Hit. Yes, so, so you get the damage from that, plus the extra 2d6 from the sneak attack. What is the damage? Uh, How do you backstab something that has no... no yeah, <laughs> best not to dwell on such things. So, uh, it's normal. Anyway, d4 plus 6. That one again. No, no, that's three. Three. Awesome. Yeah. So that's 9. And then the 2d6. Yeah. Mm. 16 altogether. Well done. Yay. All right. Uh, this thing is looking a little uh, weathered, Shaky. shall we say. Shaky. It's, it's shambling. It's trembling. It's, uh, wobbling. Of course it's trembling. It's Tipping to one side and the next. It's swaying. Hill. Is it sort of Vengeance is yours, Hill. Absolutely. Battle Fury plus two on the damage. So it's a 17. And you are almost certainly going to hit it. Yeah, that's 24. Yep. Um, so that's a, a d10 plus 7. So that's 17. Well done. 
Ouch. It's not over yet. Oh my God. Just an angry. You've angry done 109 level. points of damage to it, and it's still in front of you. Come on! Uh, are either of you guys marking it? Uh, I'll mark it so that it doesn't. Okay. What are you going? About Cathera, isn't she? Uh, Surely she's uh, yeah. useful for something. She absolutely is. She's going to move here and attack with her claws over the halfling's head. Jelly slice attack. Yep. Uh, she rolled a 10 plus, uh, she's plus 8, 18 is going to hit. She does a total of 14 points of damage. That must be. And it is still alive. Okay. It will, it is not, not very discriminating about who it attacks, so 1, 2, 3, 4. <laughs> Don't point at me. No, wizard's out of range at the moment. Two. Yay. All right. Let me teach you to creep up behind it. Uh, it ugh, did not roll well. Uh, this is against fortitude, however. Does a 13 hit your fortitude? My fortitude is 13. Then it hit. Oh, no. That's exactly what it needed. You are pulled into it. Just push. Um, oops, only one die. My mistake. Uh, that will be a total of 14 points of acid damage. Okay. All right. Uh, then it will shift to here, and it will spend its action point. <gasps> oh, yes, some monsters get action points, but only what are called elite or solo monsters. This guy will spend his action point and try to make another attack. This time it'll be one, two, <laughs> three, four. <laughs> And it'll be two. No! <laughs> <laughs> oh my uh, it only rolled a two on the attack roll, plus eight is ten versus fortitude. Oh, I missed me. Uh, <laughs> what is your fortitude, just like your uh, Twelve. Oh. <laughs> not great. All right. It reaches a sticky pseudopod out for you, but does not grab you. <laughs> That's because it was going for the hair. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and it dark. is the dwarf's turn. Uh, I'll just attack it. Yep. With uh, Battle Fury again. Mm -hmm. Actually, no, I won't do Battle Fury because I don't think it's that important to get a big... I want to make sure I hit, so I'll do Poised Assault. Okay. Um, no. Your tactics are sound. Yeah. Um, anything else I can do in this? Uh, not at the moment. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What was your total? You rolled a three plus eight is eleven. Plus one. Plus one for the poised assault is 12, which isn't quite enough. Okay. All right. Um, are you happy where you are? Um, hmm. Yeah, it's as good as any. I'm okay. hoping that it'll be dead by the time it gets back okay. to me. Cleric. Stormhammer in. Hopefully you can prove him right. Yeah, I've got to. Put some butchers in it. I'm attacking. <laughs> Stormhammer is, is, uh, is, is, is uh, at will power, so you can use that as often as you like. Okay, let's storm it. Again, crackling Stormer. lightning appears on the Come end of your on. hammer. Third time lucky. Get Thunder this thing rolls. Fires. It's like start, starting with an old motorbike. Twelve. Plus five. Plus five, seventeen. That will do. Great. All right. All so. right. So I get. Uh, is it plus five on a? Yeah. Uh, one d eight plus four. It's uh, plus. It is power. It's that there. 1d8 plus 4. Yeah, so it's not quite as much damage. Six, ten. Ten. That's one, three. All right, you whack it, it shambles and spreads out across the floor All in right. a dead pool. Ooh. Yeah, Amvar's feeling pretty and smug about that. And uh, mm -hmm. you're just sort of covered in this goop from head to toe. Uh, but it doesn't seem to be uh, bothering you quite as much. Does that carpet look valuable? <laughs> no. <laughs> what if it was? It used to. Is there any kind of bit of the carpet that I can get the goo off? Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Start doing that. You start scraping it off onto the carpet, and uh, the carpet begins <laughs> to fall apart right. and uh, become very frayed. Having slain the gelatinous cube, by the way, well done, classic D&D monster, um, <laughs> you guys discover... Uh, as you poke around, that there's like hot lunch. No. Um, <laughs> there is. Uh, do you guys want to take a quick break here and grab some food? Ah, I see. Peanut yes. bat butter. Bring, and, bring it back and to the table. Peanut and butter and gelatinous cube. Exactly. Yeah, that yeah. sounds good. All right. 
When we last left the group, they were standing ankle deep in piles of goo. Like a typical night in a Sheffield pub, yeah? Absolutely. <laughs> 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 uh, there was no treasure floating in the form of the gelatinous cube, so there was nothing to plunder there. Um, you notice that the carpet is also covered with goo at this point and doesn't look like it's salvageable in any way, shape, or form. Jokes. Never mind. Well, let's, um, let's open this door. All right. Uh, I shall say to Missy here, what's her face? Kathira. Yep. Say, it is through this door, I believe, you will find these strange... Seeds. ...growths. She says, oh, open it. Let's go inside and see. Could I um, like the, um, bother you for some... Um, Healing, if possible. Uh, well, it is uh, the end of an encounter, so if you want to, now that we're out of combat, you can spend as many healing oh, surges as you like to try to get up to full. Every time you spend a surge, you get back one quarter of your max hit points. Okay. You can Sorry, surge without me then, I guess. I now, the cleric, can, the cleric can try to enhance your surging ability by using healing words to give you that extra 1d6 you know damage. going to charge you. It's all one-way traffic for me, isn't it? It's just give, give, give. Uh, Nothing comes yes, back. Yes, I know, I know. One, one, one pearl. You get no respect. One pearl, <laughs> one pearl of wisdom. Respect and... <laughs> yep, there we go. And friendship. What, um, oh. You do get friendship and you that's, are that's, that's very kind, but, you know, needed. gold works oh, good I too. I know so exactly so where yeah. this character is. Eight go down to eight and go to full. Like uh, I've got nine healing surges left. So like, yeah. to eight and yeah. go up to full. Yeah. You got it. Well, clerics have lived on hand lights forever, haven't they? So they do. Nothing's, nothing's going to change. Nothing's changing. Just because you've got a great big lightning thing that exactly. occasionally works. Fizzles. All right. My fizzle stick. Yes. Your okay. fizzle stick. <laughs> Uh, when you put, you're going to try the key on this yes. one? Yes. Okay, when you put the key in the door, there is magical feedback and you are blasted backward oh, by, by a powerful energy bolt. Yeah, I meant to do that. I said I fly backwards. It tries to, make a, <laughs> tries to make an attack against your reflex and that's a 19 versus reflex. I imagine your reflex um, is unlucky. Now I knew that was going to happen and I wanted it to. Huge <laughs> charge with it. Uh, you take 13 points of lightning damage. <laughs> did, did you know that was going to happen? Yes, yeah, I did. Something's gone wrong with the magic on the door. Yeah. Uh, is she lying out of her? <laughs> you can tell with an insight check if she's lying or not. It's under wisdom. I think yeah. we should zap her way in. Uh, Twelve. Uh, you're pretty sure. That she, mm, you're sort of sure. I'm trying to read her owl-like <laughs> expressions. That uh, she was as surprised as you were. I totally trust this owl bear thing. <laughs> um, She'd never betray us. I'm going to use a couple of snurges, uh, healing yeah. sturges. I think basically snurges this is day. obviously going to put us somewhere within here. I mean, mm -hmm. range of the sun. <clears throat> yeah, it'll probably surge, oh, it'll probably way. take us past these. Yeah. 20, 20, 20, 20. It's not going to take us here, can, but it might take us. Can I have a look at this again? You sure can. Without touching it. Yes, that's an Arcana check. Hmm. Thirteen. Hmm. I'm a bit... <laughs> <laughs> it's a mystery, wrapped in an enigma. Uh, you, you cannot... I boldly... Clearly the door of magic has no. malfunctioned, but you... And we can't get through here. <laughs> uh, you, you think it might still be possible to thievery check your way through it, but you think the danger still persists that... Well, could get electrified. <laughs> will this door electrocute me if I try? No, I, I don't think it I will. Doubt it. I think you'll be fine. <laughs> he wants to jump on the. Should okay. Yeah. All right. The dwarf boldly goes into the room and stands on one of the. Which one are you going to stand on? Uh, is anyone coming with me? <laughs> Apparently not. We can go on it. We couldn't tell whether those were scribes, so you might want to click on the only good one. Can you remember which one it was? It was this one. Yeah. We'll go back to that. Go for the good one. Are the rest of you joining him? Yeah, why not? Yeah, When the dwarf stands on the ruin, there is an eruption of flame around him, and he disappears, uh, leaving no trace of himself except a few drifting embers. Uh oh, am I dead? <laughs> <laughs> Let's leave. <laughs> what do the rest of you do? I'm going to jump on, because I want to do that too. The same thing happens to you. <laughs> cool. 
Wouldn't this be a great way to end the game? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kill ourselves. I'm just going to ask the, the large old bear creature if she's actually used any of these yet. No. Okay. Well, you go next, then. <laughs> I don't think so. I think I'll wait here. I think the owl bear's a big wimp. Yeah. I can say that because I'm not there. <laughs> <laughs> Look, listen, with respect, you want to go in there more than we do, so I think you should be a sort of guiding light and show, lead by example. Oh, splendid. Uh, make a diplomacy check, Cleric. It's under your uh, charisma there at the bottom. Diplomacy! Okay. 11. Do I get this plus yeah. two yep. thing? You sure do. Yeah. <clears throat> How did you fare? Thirteen. So all right. Uh, she kind of goes. Mm, 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 okay. <laughs> and then she will step on and disappear as well. Well, I guess it can't be that bad. So I think we should all do it. All right. You guys are all teleported around the statue. And what do statues do in D and D? They they fight. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. They stand there like. Statues, yeah. they, they just say, gems. pull this arm down and a lot of gold will come okay. out of my stomach, right? <laughs> That's it, exactly. And his eyes going... <laughs> <laughs> or other, or right. on the other hand... Speaking of its eyes, you notice that this articulated bronze statue with the gigantic cleaving axe has two uh, what look like gleaming, flickering gemstones, red gemstones embedded in its eyes. Gem and gem? Yes. Get them, get them. And tiny little gems set all over its body. Oh, that's so it just sort of gleams and glitters as it animates right, so to roll initiative. and attacks. <laughs> uh, yes, please roll initiative. Ten. Yes. Twenty one, uh, twenty-two. I think that's a six. Twenty-two? Anybody beat a twenty-two? Uh, Eleven. No. Okay. Sounds like we're going to be starting with the wizard, but the statue gets a surprise action before anybody else. Okay. Uh, when she appears, Cathera says, Oh, I think we found the Minotaur's treasure. I have, I have read a great deal about a statue encrusted with gems. I don't know if it's encrusted with just a few stones. And uh, so it will... your lucky day, then. Yes, Cathera. indeed. And there are really six are targets it can hit. <clears throat> uh, it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, it's got reach. Oh, it's going to hit the dwarf. Which makes sense. The dwarf was the first one to show up. Mm -hmm. uh, right this thing will swing. It will roll a 24 versus armor class. Okay. okay. Um, I'm sure that hits me yet. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, it will do a total of 15 points of damage. Okay. And uh, when it hits you, it hits you with such force that it knocks you back one. Okay. This is a new encounter, so I got my power strike back, right? That is correct. Yep. Yep, you got all your red is cards back. Does this reach? It does. Oh, it can reach out to hit things two squares away from it. Uh, and after it swings, wizard, you are the next uh, to, it, to act. So if I just... I could take a, a little shift, but then I'd still be in its... Correct. So it's, it would still be able to... Uh, blah, 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 it, wouldn't get a, it wouldn't get a free attack on you, but it could still hit you on its next turn. Would it, if I, but if I try to do a... Magic missile or something? Will it get an attack of opportunity? Uh, if you do that here, yes, it will. Um, uh, what can I do? So it'll, anything I do, it'll get an attack on me. Um, Unless I try and move completely out of effects that are bursts or blasts do not provoke opportunity attacks. Mm -hmm. So that's one burst possibility. And blast, burst, 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 burst. So fire if you were blast to... that would get everybody. Yeah, that's the thing. Right, well, I'm going to I'm going to retreat. Yep. Oop, into there. Um, and then I am going to use freezy burst. Freezy burst. Ice cube burst. Yeah, that's a burst. That's three square. Three uh, by three it squares. Is yeah, burst one. Yeah. Is that three by three? So that that'll work. We're all yeah. out of that. So it's centered right. on that square. You drop icy icy is upon him. Little kind of birdies. Yep. Um, Finches. One of the things you guys notice mm -hmm. as this thing starts to wheel around and hit you is that it does seem to be rooted to the floor. Ah. It, it does not have mobility. <laughs> Everybody get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's right. Um, um, magic so, robot thing. Yeah. Uh, freezy burst. Um, finch burst. Bring it. Bring it on. Um, 
Oh, I'm going to use Elven accuracy because I rolled a one. Okay. Which means I can yes. use it again. Well <laughs> Nine. Big whoop. Total? Total. Ugh, no. Sadly. Against not. reflexes. Uh, that does not hit its reflex, unfortunately. I can give you a Levi of judgment and let you so you can go again. Once before the end of the encounter when an ally misses the target with an attack, he can use a free action to allow the ally to re-roll that attack roll. Dun, 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 dun. You want to use that? So Splendid. Have, have some of that. Have a bit of that. And third time. There's the cleric. Don't want out the love again. Um, tw- what was it? It was tw- mm, is that one? Which one was it? I'm using Freezy Burst. So that's um, 17 Hit. versus reflexes. Well done. This is the cleric's damage, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's my damage. <laughs> And that does nine points of damage. Okay. Oh, and I can slide in one square, except I can't. Except he can't be slid. To the ground. Yeah. Okay, well done. Tac Tac. Um, Thank you very much. He, he's facing away from me, isn't he? He is. Excellent. But that counts as a sneak attack because he doesn't know I'm there. No. Oh, he, I am he, flanking. Yeah, what? I'm flanking it. No, you're not. Well, it's, it's opposite me. Okay. No, it I'm doesn't just... work that way. Um, <laughs> why not? <clears throat> way to try to cheat, though. I admire that. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Always dead. Max lying. Okay. Just, just as well. Yeah. 14, 17. That hits him. Excellent. So that's just... This thing actually four, appears six. to be made out of bronze, so you just <coughs> impale it Ooh. through his back. Nine points of damage. Oh, well done. This is going to be humongous. Uh, you notice as you strike with your weapon into its back that it is hollow on the inside. Uh, and um, fire begins to come out. Is it just sort hole. of fire, Ooh. or is it sort of reaching out fire that looks like it's coming towards me? No, it's more like you just sort of punct- punctured a hole through the statue and its innards seem to be filled with fire. Oh dear. Does okay. it get extra freezy damage? It uh, doesn't get extra freezy damage. Actually, mm. yes, it does. It gets five extra freezy damage. Ooh, Thank freezy you for reminding me. One. And actually, when you hit it, you also notice there's a fair amount of warmth coming off of it. Okay. So there's a chance that if we destroy this thing, it might we might all go on fire. Possibly. Should we just head this way? Yeah, I'm wondering, because it's rooted to the spot, shall we leave Can't it alone? But it's got all the treasure. And see what's, um, mm-hmm. see what's with this room. Yeah, but Mrs. Albo wanted to go in there, didn't she? Let's deal with this one first. Hill, yeah, you're so up. It might kill us. Mm. As long as you keep a, 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 a square like that round it, and then no, I can keep I dropping the freezy burst. The fire. The f- if, if this goes oh. down, there's a fire inside it. That it might be a trap. Is it possible to pick up some of the gems it might off be it? Power source. You think that as a like a standard action, you could try to pry gems off of it? At least a couple. <laughs> oh, how about it's <laughs> how about <laughs> an arcana? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just leave the gold. The gold's fine. Do That's I heavy. think? This oh, is sorry. some sort of huge fireball trap thing when it dies. That will be either, uh, I would say, like a dungeoneering check, since it's more of a trap than a... Um, plus six on dungeoneering? Fifteen. Uh, you don't think so, but you think that the way that it's hinged in the face suggests it might actually be able to breathe fire. No! Uh, and that the fire comes, is the statue is hollow. The fire obviously comes from some sort of Fire spring below it, and it's just fed up through the statue. And then so, if we, if we, even if we move out of range, it'll, it'll do so a secondary you, attack. Well, yeah, you want to spread out so that it can't get lots of us at once. Right. Okay. So the way we're at is actually not necessarily a bad way to be. True, because chances are it wouldn't be able to hit all of you. Yeah. I don't like the way it's pointing at me. On my power strike. Yes. Okay. Um, so you're going to give it a good whack. I'm going to, yeah. Poise. Poised assault, so plus one okay. on my attack um, with my power strike. Ooh. I think it was that one. Oh, that's a six. That's not good. Um, mm. Yeah, that's an 11, 12. Uh, that's versus AC. Yeah. Uh, you're deflected off by its metallic skin, yeah. sadly. All right, it will angle itself, well, stay where it is, and it will breathe out a cone of flame that uh, targets both the wizard and the dwarf. <sighs> Just sort of engulfs you both. The wizard, natural one. That's a miss. The dwarf, bleh. Uh 14 versus reflex defense dwarf. 
Your reflex is in the middle. Sorry. Twelve. Oh, yes, that's going to hit you. Okay. Okay. It hits you for a total of ten fire damage. Okay, I'm down to fifteen. All right, you are smoldering. Okay. And, uh... Can I just ask, though, can it, can it attack this way with, with its breath? Yes, it looks like it can pivot and yeah. attack in any orientation it wants. Okay. It just so it's, it's all, it's all this part is almost... Yeah. Correct. Okay. Yeah. It's almost like it's on a revolving pedestal. Okay. Okay. I can try and attract his attention when it gets program to me. Yeah. 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 And Dwarf, you're up. Okay. Um, did I try the power strike last time and fail? Um, no, I don't believe so. Okay, I'll go for that then. Okay. Uh, you'll need to move up so you're adjacent to it. Go here, <coughs> spread out a bit. Yeah. You are flanking with the rogue, so you get a plus two bonus on your attack roll. Oh, oh so close to a 20. Denied. Okay. Went to a two. It's gone. Okay, whiff. Cleric. Is it me again? It is. Oh, I'm sorry, before we go to... But yeah, you want a uh, bit of help well, here, a bit of healing. Oh, okay, you want to use your minor resurgence this time? Absolutely, you can do that. Uh, is that just like a to to get hit points? It doesn't. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll do that. Why not? Twenty. Done. Sorry. Yeah, no worries. Okay, I'm getting my fizzle stick out again. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Let's see if we can't redeem this power. Come on. The staff is bad breath. <laughs> no. <Nope. laughs> <laughs> It's not even a sparkler, is it? <laughs> it doesn't even work anymore. It's just like clunk, clunk, clunk. Okay. Um, once again, Storm Hammer Shaking. fails the cleric. What's the... Um, I think you're going to have to try a new god. What's this uh, Kathira Kathira do? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Uh, Cord. I don't want to forget she is going. She is going to... Uh, Cuff it. Try to give it a big whack with her paw. Oh, no. She rolled pathetically. She gives it a crack with her paw, but it doesn't do anything. Um, I'm just trying to think. Uh, minor actions. No. Okay. Right. I'm going to go <laughs> to there. Okay. And there. Oh, you're all, somebody's in the way. <sighs> Help me. Thank you, Miss Alpha Six. Wear it down. Well, you see, if I do the freezing burst, though, it does a D6 plus four plus something else. Five. That's five. I think it was. But you'll all get that. Mm -hmm. but it would. Um, it well, it would get at least one other character. It would catch the dwarf. Yeah. Or it would catch. Minimally, it would catch the dwarf. Mm. Yeah, and I don't it's think worth it. Appreciate How that. many points would it take off? Uh, it does uh, what? One d. One d six. Well, I might miss you. One d six plus four. <laughs> one d six plus four. Plus four. Up to ten points. I can heal you. Okay. Well, yeah. Go ahead. I've got. It, um, drop it on the dwarf. I've got twenty points. So. Discretion be damned. Yeah. Yeah. It's five to two. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna use a penguin. <laughs> More Fair. ice cubes, I suppose. Um, that runs along and then just explodes. Um, Love it. So, do I get a separate attack on each of them? Uh, yes. Should we do the dwarf first? first? on the dwarf. Three. 17 <laughs> against your reflexes. Okay. Well, that's going to well. hit. It's almost a two. Against the statue. Three. Against the two now. Three. Oh, sorry. So that's four, five, six, seven. Seven. And against the statue. Statue will take the same damage if it's hit. 12. 12. Plus. 17 against reflex. Hit! All right. Uh, what 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 do do? Because 7 the damage ice. plus the whatever it takes from yep. being free, freezy. Okay, free the statue is bloodied. Just. Oh, God. That's well great. Just the statue not take the extra 5. Oh, thank you. I'm glad yeah. someone's watching. Just keep okay. the numbers there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Their DM's cheating. <laughs> tack Tack! You are flanking with the dwarf at present. Yep, death strike. Yep. So it's plus two because of the dwarf. <laughs> so it's plus one, 15, 23. Yes. Yay. Uh, 10. Nicely done. And Hill. Hill. Um, Hill's going to try and attract the attention of this thing. Okay. If um, you shift one square that way, you will also be flanking with the dwarf. Oh, yes, that's a good, good call. Diagonal, you mean? Yeah. Oh, no, that no, way. Sure. Oh, that's hill. Yeah. Mm. So I'll take the flank. I'm going to go for Battle Fury. Okay. I'm try and get some damage on this thing. Um, that's 11 plus the two bonus for flanking is 13, um, 20. 
Well done. That's it. And so that's um, a D10 plus the 5 plus the extra 2. Mm -hmm. 17. Oh, nicely so, done. So that's 16 points of damage. All right. You disable it. <laughs> it just sort of lurches forward. Its head drops down. Its axe sags in its grip. And it is clearly rendered inoperative. Uh, as soon as that happens, and you hate it when the DM says that. This <laughs> <laughs> coven opens. Almost. <laughs> the uh, whole altar there in the alcove starts to lift up on a big stone block. As it's lifting up, do you guys want to do anything? I'm I'm go that way. <laughs> <laughs> Run! Ah! Dive over there. Okay, dwarf dives over there. I'm going to kind of cow behind here. Okay. <laughs> what are the rest of you two guys this way? I'll, yeah, I'll step back into the You're going to stand in front of it with your bag of holding. The owlbear will duck behind the wall. Like a holding here there. The owlbear will duck behind the That's uh, oh, Hill. Oh, yeah, okay. There we okay. go. Cleric? I want to take her bag of holding and hold it out. Just catch everything. <laughs> That comes out of this thing in a shower of gold. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> awesome. A fountain of gold coming our way. I love the cleric's optimism. <laughs> All right. But in reality, <laughs> you shall see. I, might, I might just move back a little. Okay. Uh, as it lifts up on this great block, it stops, but not before you see there is a hole carved out of the block on which this altar is positioned. And it's a recess inside of which are three golden chests. Oh. Three okay. golden chests. Yes, and you can see the chests are ornamented with uh, what appear to be uh, bits of horn and other ornamentation. They look like small treasure coffers. Get your bag out. Yeah. Tack, tack. Do you want to check it for I was going to say, is there any sort of runes that say don't open this, it's a curse or anything? It's three, which isn't good. I think we need to ask the bear lady what more she knows about this, because she started talking about this must be the fabled treasure. Yes. So, she says, Ah, oh, the Minotaurs, they hid all of their finest treasures here, guarded by a bronze warder. And it's all ours, Ness. Yes. So... Yes, it's all ours. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> so, so... Are you only wanted okay. seats? Go get your seats. <laughs> ah, sure but does she know anything... <laughs> You know, is there any other part of that story? Is there Can one chest the that's a trap package. or anything like that? The one that says, you know, two of the chests are bogus yeah, and the yeah. other one is real? Yeah. She says, I, I, no, I don't believe so. Oh, I think we're safe. Can I? What could possibly go wrong? Let's open them up. To... Oh, I'm, I'm so greedy, I just want to open. 24. Okay. Uh, you believe that uh, one of the chests is trapped. Which one? The middle one. <laughs> Hey. I say, Cathera, yes, would you like to have the middle chest? <laughs> and we'll take the other one. One third? Well, I, yes. That well, sounds reasonable. I came down to look for it. <laughs> oh. No, we but should split it evenly. What, are, what is our alignment? I notice our alignment. I guess we could be all evil. <laughs> no. I left it um, deliberately blank so you guys could well, figure that out. Right she, she's annoying. Um. She's deeply annoying. <laughs> I, I think the one with the chat is the one with the good stuff in it, isn't but it? But that'll so. probably have the good stuff in, so we don't necessarily. We could just it. open them all and just. No, 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 no. That would. Um, I, actually, stop, Cathera. I think that middle one might be trapped. <laughs> she gives it a shake. It's all right to me. Yeah. And swallows it whole. <laughs> <laughs> you never saw that treasure again until 24 hours later when it. No. Um, okay. Uh, she will uh, give the chest a, a quick once-over, and uh, she hands it to the rogue. You should be able to take care of this. Do I have a dealing with traps? Uh, you do. It's basically a th uh, you can do a thievery check it's to disarm thievery. it. Cool. I shall attempt to disarm whatever trap may be in there. Nice. Uh -huh. 19. 19 plus 31, I think. Okay. Yeah, you notice as you're able to pop the lid a little bit and look inside, and you see that on the inside of the chest, there are these vials arranged along the roof, the inside roof of the chest. And it looks like there's a small mallet in place that breaks them when the chest is opened improperly. Um, and you think you can disable that mallet just by slipping your tool into the chest and sort of knocking it out of place. 
So when you pop the chest, the mallet springs, it does not break the vials, and the whole room does not fill with poison gas. <laughs> Which is a plus. Yes. Uh, what you find is a clearly a, a trove left behind by an ancient and powerful culture of old gold ingots and uh, other goodies in, in small sacks and pouches. You also find a rolled up tube in the middle one, in the middle chest. Uh, when you pop that open, you see it contains a map, a very detailed map. Of a pl- a pl- a countryside or? It shows what appears to be a, a map leading to a maze city, the city of Leng, which Kathira points out is where the sort of the Minotaur, an ancient Minotaur culture resided, but it's its location was lost after the city was presumably swallowed beneath the earth. And she says, anyone who finds Leng is worthy of the title True Adventure. Mm-hmm. Well, we've got we've still got 15 minutes left. <laughs> <laughs> um, what about okay. the other chests? Uh, the other chests contain uh, some more magic items. Uh, some more gold ingots, uh, what appears to be uh, some uh, three golden idols depicting different uh, very powerful minotaur champions. Uh, and that's the sum of it. But you estimate the, the combined value of this hoard is almost close to uh, 8,000 gold pieces, Sweet. which is considerably more Lots than... Lots of experience. Yes. Yeah, that's ridiculous oh. for a level two character. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. But some of that's going to go to Cathera, right? Like uh, yeah, she's going to share. She's going to take some of your loot. She wants. She can have a copy of the map. You know. She there are also the gemstones something. in the statue, which you've been busily <laughs> popping out sure one by lead. one. Sure, the lead found over there. I didn't think Cathera was interested in it. I thought Cathera was after something she, more. She's after some uh, seeds that the. Well, do we want to show we see the if seed we can... room? Is that a locked door, or is it just a... This a is a normal door. And what about this room? Uh, that one's also a normal door. We don't want to, we don't want to leave these alone. I no. think these are just another fight. Yeah. Let's... let's okay. Yeah? When you yeah. open up those doors, you see those uh, ancient withered trees, and she says, Ah, this must be where they are. Told you. Okay. And she will scamper into the room. Okay. I'll bet that's scamper. Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> she goes over, and she gives... Uh, the trees have all of these sort of black acorns lying around them and things like that, and she starts to scoop them up and crack them open in her beak, and she starts to collect all these seeds. It's at that time when you see some creatures begin to phase out from inside of the trees, and they themselves kind of look rather arboreal. They're these humanoid monsters. Mm. Mm-hmm. that have glowing green eyes. Wooden jobbies. One. And uh, when they appear, this each one, one appears next to each tree. That's it. Perfect. And uh, one of them says, What are you doing? And Cathera's like, I'm collecting seeds. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> Clearly mad. She says, Do not attack us. We only want your seeds. You don't want to die. I wonder if we should just write neutral in alignment. <laughs> should we just shut, just shut the door? The door. <laughs> <laughs> they can get on happy. We've got all the gold. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See you on. later. They're obviously busy. Catch them sound effects. Yeah, it's a good All right. You know, that's probably as good a way to end this. <laughs> Bye. It's been special. <laughs> Click. Yeah. Yes. That's You've got... You've got your map to the next adventure. You've got a pile of loot, so you can get Could fat on that. Uh, you've got your exit. <laughs> this was a great game for me. I had a ton of fun. I uh, put together this adventure special for this occasion. I knew I was going to be running it for a group of people who hadn't played before or who uh, at least hadn't played in a long time. And uh, I had a great fun playing all the monsters and watching what the characters would do, and I hope you enjoy watching it as well. And he disappears, uh, leaving no trace of himself except a few drifting embers. Uh-oh. Oh, my dad? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed it very much. It was the um, uh, first time I played it since I was 18, and I didn't really play it properly then, so it may, in a way I feel like it's the first time I've ever played it. <laughs>
So it's certainly the first time I played as a, as a player rather than a DM. So um, it was very instructive. And, and I'd love to do it again sometime. I want to take her bag of holding and hold it out and just catch everything <laughs> that comes out of this thing in a shower of gold. Uh, it was fantastic playing Dungeons & Dragons today. I haven't done it for 25 years. And, and in t today's modern age, when people don't have so much time, this is a great experience because everything's ready and waiting for you to actually start playing immediately. So, fantastic. Really enjoyed it. Well, oh, my gosh. Okay. That is a crit. I've been playing Dungeons & Dragons since... I was uh, 78, and uh, I've played most of the editions, but I haven't really played 4th edition. Um, and I really enjoyed that. I thought that was really good. Um, and I really, like, I really like what Wizards have done with it. I really like the way it's been streamlined, and um, I look forward to uh, playing some more. Is there any kind of bit of the carpet that I can get the goo off? Yes. <laughs> I've played a little bit of D&D in the past, and I have really enjoyed it, but 4th Ed is very easy to pick up, very easy to play, and it's been really, really fun, so I highly recommend it. Wait for backup. I'm going to wait and see what happens. Okay, call for backup. Sorry, guys, good luck. I've not done a, a great deal of D&D over the years. 4th um, Ed, I've played one or two of the encounters. Um, the reaction from the people that we have in the store now is that what... Uh, D&D has done is really got this game out there um, its appeal is a lot broader and we get kids playing the small sessions, we get guys playing the big sessions, D&D 4th Ed is ace yeah. okay. Look, this is not the place to argue <laughs> Perfect place right, to argue <laughs>